I start thinking for a couple of reasons we shouldn't. Either we should say no or a special permit. One is this isn't the type of use that we were, you know, that you think about in an area like this. And second, it, it gets confusing, especially with the when we talked about the language to require a mixture of uses. Throwing a duplex in there kind of creates some complexities, particularly because the building type for a duplex is a residential use. Mm -hmm. All these others are commercial use buildings, even multifamily is considered commercial use. So I would just ask that if you all would consider either putting that as a no or as a special permit. So a one and two family home is, is the residential code. Mm -hmm. And then when you get into three or more units, it becomes a commercial building. So two dwellings and and a commercial building would be three units and would require sprinklers. So you'd use the IBC. The IRC is for one and two families. So it, it, it would throw a residential code, which is a lesser, stricter compliance method. And if you're trying to get the density regulations, I don't think that it would mix with what you're trying to do mm. here. Well, the, Are there duplexes in there now? Well, yeah, it is. But I'm looking at, at the dimensional schedule, and it sort of looks like the duplex, we defined the multi Tenant multi unit properties as a duplex. So well, more than two, though, becomes um, so you want to say multifamily. But th that's under right now under duplex, we have three units, four units, five units, and six units. So I, I don't know. So that a definition know. of duplex is under that what you're saying? Yeah, well, under the dimensional requirements. If you compare the two tables, that's what means Paul? so like, we oh, have, okay. Yeah. So we have now the apartment over, but what happens is it more than one apartment over, or is it several floors over, and does that is that I, 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 you know, a standalone duplex? I understand for two units, but it's sort of conflicting with what we're doing here now and allowing for. So I see what you're saying in the in the dimensional so if it's three requirements. Units, you know, we're saying two units, no, maybe three units. It's only if it's a, a, on the upper floors. So if it's an upper floor, they may have two units on a build on an upper floor with, with two floors. But I think that if it goes upper floor like that, I think that that becomes top of the shop. Okay, then we haven't defined top of the shop in terms of the number of units. Because well, we said here we have to have so many square footage. So, well, I think Shouldn't top we first? Of the shop could be, it could technically be one unit. It's just a placement above a uh, commercial unit in one building. In a, in a building. But, okay, I, just, I think right now, the, in my mind, the duplex is contemplating three or four story units, or several units, as opposed to. So maybe we just need to redefine our, um, our, our language. So duplex is two. Uh, multifamily is more than two or, or yeah, three and more. Yeah. Yes, this, and then, I agree with you. Yeah, I guess if you're getting into you know seven units, you may want to have have the square footage requirements. I don't know what they should. That's what we're having, but as long as that matches up. I, so I, I think the first step though is to say, do we want a yes or s special permit for VCC on is, residential uses? Right. Are there duplexes on any of the current par parcels? All in, special in the permits. Says here. I in the map. Believe so there's the, okay. the, the areas that we're so I was thinking at like there's two buildings doors. in between Wendell's and the historical society. Yeah. Those yeah. two houses are those a, are those technically a duplex or are they multifamily? I think those are multi. I believe they're multifamily. Which which buildings again? I'm sorry, Julie. Between, Wendell's and, the between Wendell's and historical society, aren't there two homes there, there Chris? Are. Yeah, I think they're single family homes though. I'm All not right. sure. So I'd have to look at them. Structure is, but I just think curious. I so think Wheaton's students live there. Is that the um is that the old bank building that you're talking about? No, on the opposite side of the well. No. Yeah. Further down the street towards Wendell. Towards Scott we Drive. There the properties right. Yeah, piece right at the top there. Yeah. See these two properties here? Yeah. I, I, I don't know them off the top of my head. Well, I was just I thinking, like, jacket. if we were going to protect, like, <coughs> the, the existing use, would it be better to put a special permit because then so, we don't make them nonconforming? So you could just change it and make them nonconforming, and then, you know, um, yeah. they could remain in that status in limbo forever, actually, okay. until, uh, yeah. you know, they chose to do something. Can we back up a step? Right above it, we have multifamily is a yes. Right. So are we saying you can put an apartment building up there? Well, Without a the, first floor being saying, rent retail? Well, what we're saying is you could do three or more units as part of that commercial building. So if you had... Well, no, but this is a multifamily dwelling. That, that's right. an apartment building. That doesn't require any retail. But for, resident, 
for for uses, we don't allow any of them anywhere. No without we, special we, permit. No special family. We have yes. So multifamily for the VCC. Yeah, yeah for yeah. prior to VCC, there was no yeses in there yeah, for so, either right. duplex or. So other. my question is: Are we uh, intending to allow, allow multifamily, including the first floor? Because if we're not, then this is wrong. We, remember, we, we are, because remember the, what, the language you had agreed upon was you had allowed, allowed on the first floor as long as the residen uh, residential wasn't mm -hmm. fronting. Right, was in the, the rear. It was in the rear. So, so you could. Can so we do the same thing? Can the same thing apply to a duplex at that point? Is that I mean, correct? I guess the question becomes, because we're talking about, there's a difference between uses and building structures. So, mm -hmm. so to take your question, could we do? We could say a duplex, but you know, it, it, we could say duplex. a duplex because you could have two units and the retail in the front. So, you but no, and it. then that would make it three that's within the same building, and then right. it's a commercial building. So yeah. that's where we get confused. So, right. duplex probably should go to a no or a special permit. Well, why don't we do both multifamily dwelling and duplex as special permits? Then it matches well, the VC. Well, multi well, is more than three, so it reason, could be anything. The reason for why we put multifamily as a yes was again as an incentive to try to get that type of housing there. Oh, gotcha. As as an as of right use, uh, but I just but back to work. I mean, if if we were to say yes or or in thinking through this more, again, when we say duplex in this table, it's just the use. So it, it it's not saying it has to be two. It doesn't mean the building type where you have two units side by side. It just means you have two connected units together. How is that <coughs> from the multifamily, so, I guess, is the question. Well, multifamily is at three units. Above. Well, but that's the definition we have with dimensions say three units and four units. I know, so we have to change that, Oren. There you go, so, I yeah. agree. Yeah, yeah. we've got to change yep. that, Oren. So we'll just we'll confirm all the um, definitions are the same. Yeah. Is the intent to have preference over top of the shop housing? The preference. Is to have so that should be a yes. The other two should be a special permit, so that you, the path of least resistance is going to have top of the shop, right? Right. So if we move well, multifamily dwelling and duplex to both special permits for village commercial core, and then, and then we fix the definitions for multifamily. We could direct them then to top of shop then. Right. Okay. So, so could we just so we would turn. So duplex, duplex. VCC would be SP. Multifamily dwelling for VCC would also be SP. Okay. And then we have to fix the definition. Right, and then I think or. on the zoning, on the dimension, right, Orrin, we'll, we'll change it from duplex to multifamily. It could be duplex or multifamily. Or multifamily, right. Well, we'll just, it just needs multifamily added next to three Three units, or more, so, yeah. right, in that box, Alan, right? Exactly. If you add multifamily well, here. Yeah, because well, duplex is an existing use in the table. Right, add it like that. So that was exactly. not it. The only thing that we added there was the dimensional uh, requirement of 5,000 square feet. But then what? Uh, actually, all so of these. This is how it's actually defined now in the table as two. If you add multifamily next to the three-unit one, you'll have duplex and then multifamily three, four, five, six, seven. So just add multifamily? In that box Does before that it says be three units per building. Or you want to direct three them to the... units per building and down. If that makes sense, I, I think it's the definition of duplex that we we need to define each one of these. So if we had a clear definition for each one, so instead and then in the definitions, I think it's fairly building, clear. If we okay. say two units per building and, and as a replacement. Oh, you could do duplex. that. Yeah, you could do that too. You could do that too, Paul, to clarify it. We do have definitions. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So do that. So in the zoning, the definition of duplex it is building containing two dwelling units. Yes. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Okay. Period. Multifamily. Apartment house containing three or more dwelling units. Yeah. So then, okay. So yeah. So do two of, units per building. Really good. So we'll we'll just add multifamily under the duplex. So you should treat the duplex as the Plains same house. as the single family. You know, that's that's. So you should be treating that as a no or the same as the single family. That's well, I guess the question is, is are, it's two. So if we eliminate the term duplex uh, as far as in this use uh, in the dimensional table, then would it be acceptable to allow, let's say, a, pro a project that came in? And it could only do two units and say one's top of the shop. Let's say they're both top of the shop. Well, I guess that would trigger a top of the shop then. Right. So in what, what case are we ever going to have a duplex is what I'm trying to think. Yeah. Are we, will there ever be a duplex alone? Well, so unless you have a, have, a, have, a, have a front of the, front of the, of the first floor is being retailed and the back is 
is a unit and one on top. Be a top. So, that'd be a commercial building. So again, you get back into the um, this, the problems with the building codes. You, you go to a separate code book for one and two family homes. So that's a lesser construction, type five, anything goes, all wood frame, and it wouldn't mix with what you're trying to do in the rest of the, the area. So that's that's why there's a problem. Okay. I'm, I'm not so, sure we'd ever have a duplex standing by not. itself. I agree. Yeah. So I, think I, I agree. think it's a no. So what if, well, honestly. what if we just put on the dimensional table, duplex, two units, right? So you'd add two units in there. Yeah. And then in front of three, four, five, six, and seven units per building, just put Multi-family. So multi-family, three units per building, multi-family, four units yeah. per building. And then you're clean, right? I, and then I the difference between duplex, two units, is that would mean they're both residential, whereas top of the shop says one residential, not one non-residential. Yeah. But the question is, do we want to do the just two units, is what you were saying, Chris? You That's correct. I, I believe Alan's on the yes. same page, right? I, think I, I don't, well, what we're trying no. to do, I don't think we're ever going to have a two-unit. I don't think you'll ever have a duplex standing So by you just put NA under the Without a special permit. I mean, with a special permit, you could, though, right? With if, a, we, if we have a special permit. If yeah. You put it special permit. It just seems to be contradictory to what we've been talking about the whole time. And yeah, what we're trying I, to I encourage. Just, yeah, I feel like if we were, I think we're okay if we say no on duplexes. But again, well, if I, we. The other thing, we're allowing multiple uses on a lot. So if the lot's big enough, could they have a duplex and a retail store? So what they could do is have yes. two units and the retail, and that would be three, but it wouldn't be no, called a duplex. Could be, could be separate. Could you have could be a, a separate big enough lot? Could you have a duplex, duplex like a driveway a and a duplex in the back? I mean, okay. we're allowing multiple uses. It depends uses. on how gives people the proximity. The if they choose that they want to do it in the future for the village VCC, it's not restricting it, right? It's going to be a harder process to get it, though. Yeah, it would, and then depending on the proximity of the buildings and you know, how close they are, then you would have fire separation distance and the firewalls. Yeah. But then there's no definition for firewalls in the residential code. So, right. a, again, it's a very tricky proposition. Yeah. So I would just treat it as a single-family home and, and just say no. Or, And then if they wanted to have just two units, then it would be part of a multifamily building with the bottom, you know, top-of-the-shop kind of scenario. Right. So, yes, they could do a smaller top-of-the-shop scenario and have two, two dwelling units. But, you know, but you still want to have your uh, commercial core. Yeah, but if we do that, though, we're, we then you have to change two units. So units in multiple. You know, we probably want to get rid of the word, well, duplex is there. We want to change that to multiple, you know. Well, again, when, they, when it says duplex, it's just the use. And that's all, again, I would just say that for clarity, it's just, it's just saying you could do two units of building. Duplex could be a double stack building, technically. I mean, you could have a stairway taking you up to the second, you know, second floor, and that could be another unit. So, um, so I mean, I, I, we might be okay if we just called it special permit, and I mean, it would kick it to to the planning board to then decide if that's appropriate or not. Because there it could be a situation where they, if the a property could be tight enough where. They could only get two units in, and and, uh, and you know, I mean, we probably should give some flexibility on it and give them. You know, but I, but if we do that, is that is, is that causing problems in the, with the building code? Well, uh, it it'll come up on an individual basis, and you'll have to look at the proximity. And again, it, it does have a problem because firewalls and ratings aren't in the residential code. So a duplex is, is a one and two family building. So yes, I think you're gonna have a problem. So um, I think you should just treat it as a single family and say, same, no. Say, say no. And then if they just wanna have two units, then they'd have to do some percentage of commercial or, and make it three. So they would, it, would, it would trigger the, uh, the building code to kick in. Well, we, we say, we say three units in the dimensional code. We're, we're talking about residential units, aren't we? Yes. Yes. So a, any combination of, uh, of more than two units is a commercial building. So two dwelling units or one dwelling unit and two commercial spaces, any combination of three within the same structure. Okay. Then triggers a stricter code requirement that has fire rating walls and, and sprinklers and okay. such. But we're calling it multifamily. So we're, Thank you. But it's, yeah. something, but, but it's different, though, because if we're saying you can have two units, two residential units and one commercial, it's not a multi, it wouldn't fit under multifamily. If it's no, multi no, but they, they could still do it. Um, I think just, you know, just clearly define multi or, or more than two units, anything with more than two units. 
it, it, that's kind of what you want, right? And I think if they did a, if they did the two units above, that would fall under top of the shop. And if they had two commercial units, then I can still put them in the commercial code right. and build it to a stricter standard and, and get these buildings closer together. Mm. That's that's the whole idea. I got it. I'm just trying to figure out how we can. But that. when you have more than you know less than two <clears throat> residential units, that's the problem. So it, we treat it as a single family home. Anything goes, and it's a problem. Yeah. Because I, right. I just can't regulate it. I got it. <clears throat> yeah, so we just treat it as a no. Yeah, I think and we should go with a, a no. And it's <coughs> an A in the. So, table but then. Um, hmm. So just the duplex goes Three, to a no. Yeah. Can we say multifamily? Uh, okay. Multifamily so, says it's a yes. So multifamily, the, I would say yes. So. So this is no. So does that multifamily, does that come in with um, our requirement of having frontage re being retail or first floor being retail somewhere? Are you on the dimensional table, Owen? Or are you uh, it's on the use tables? Sorry, is that, I'm just uh, that's on the use? Is that the, well, I thought we saw it. I saw it somewhere. I'm trying to yeah, remember. Yeah, it's on uh, page three. That was the language we added last week in the highlighted. Um, oh, in the blue? Room. Yeah. No dwelling in Chicago and your person on the first floor. Okay. And then, but, so, multifamily units. So, okay, so top of the shop housing. We don't define that in terms of any numbers. So, like in here, we have three, four, up to seven. We, we increase the footprint from five to 10,000 square feet. Do we have any of that now on top of the shop? I don't think we have any we dimensional have requirements for top of the shop. Is that what we're looking at, three, four units, top of the shop or multifamily maybe? Uh, but that's only in, the, again, that's only in village commercial. So yeah. I'm messing this up. So I'm, I'm sorry, or is your question Right now, we're fine with having commercial and two units right. together in one building. Yes. Okay. So right now, we have multifamily dwelling, mm -hmm. which basically uh, doesn't provide, what, what top of the shop isn't defined to allow two units. There's nothing that says two, unit, two residential units are allowed on top, of the, uh, on top of the shop, for one. And two, if you get up to seven units, do you want to increase the footprint from 5,000 to 10,000? The, the dimensional requirements on the square footage. Yeah, I mean, that's the way it works, is that if you go from four units to five units, you, you have to increase the lot size. Right, so all, all I'm just saying is uh, that's fine under the multifamily. But I, does that work on for top of the shop? Yeah, because it's, it's still, we're looking at it as... Does the top of the shop have to have three units, I guess, is, or can it have one unit on top of the shop or couldn't have two units on top of the well, shop. The, de to the definition to said one residential and one non-residential. Yes. Or does it say one or more? We have a definition in here. For yes. which? For top of the shop. Okay, what is it? Residential say? use located in the same building as non-residential use. It doesn't give a number though. Right, we don't give a number so we would let the, yeah. the, the dimensional requirements. But, okay, so what dimensional requirements do they use in terms of the, 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 the unit numbers is I guess the question I have. So it's allowed, but... So if you have one residential unit anywhere in the building and one non-residential, you're saying so, how big right. are the requ dimensional this, requirements for right. one no residential? For, right, one or two. Right now, we're just talking about three. So if we have one or two on top of... Gotcha. Of commercial, then it's square footage is where sprinklers kick in and, and, and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, you tell us which, what, yeah. what we need for that. I have no idea. Is the five and ten work for you, or does it, is that... I'd have to go back. It depends on what the building's being used for. So if they were storing high explosives, then it would be absolutely sprinklers. But if they're storing pampers, then no, sprinklers wouldn't be required for 5,000. So it would, it, it's, it's, okay. there's too many variables. But I mean, probably if we're getting up to seven units, you want to have bigger footprint because you're going to also need to make parking arrangements for them. Right, right. So that's why we would increase the minimum lot size there. Okay. So, in the the lots select proposed right now, the smallest lot is less than five thousand square feet, right? Uh, I 
thought we looked at the, yeah, there was a few in there that were small. And yeah. I guess they would just be non-conforming, right? Which they are now. So at top of the shop. Okay. I think it's that, that, it's that point that there's no dimensional on it. Yeah, that's it. For the one or two, other than single right. family. Because I think what we're saying is one or two, we don't. It doesn't matter. It wouldn't be appropriate. Yep. But you start getting to three units, four units. Remember, okay, so top of the shop is really more of a building type than it is a use. Residential is a use, so we have one unit, two units. Those are uses. But then you get into whether it's garage apartment, duplex, you know, duplex physical structure, uh, apartments, garden apartments, <coughs> building structures. So we don't yep. get into that in here. The build, we don't get into the building structure itself. We're just trying to determine, you know, you can do retail, you can do two units, three units. So, but if there, if there is a top of the shop, so one residential, one non-residential, the minimum footage requirement is 5,000 for the lot, right? Yeah. Right, the minimum lot size. It would size fall under that duplex years. two units, even though it's... I'm sorry? It would fit under the what we have now for duplex, right, for VCC? Well, uh, then you have three and four units is also 5,000 square feet. Sure. So... But that, yeah, that changes code though, right? So uh, I think we're confusing duplexes is two dwelling units. So, but if they have two commercial units, it's still a commercial building. What about one and one? One of each. One and one is 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 depends on how much square foot. It, commercial building is a commercial building, so um, it would have to be constructed. Uh, again, the code allows you know use a type five construction um, depending on the use. So again, explosive fireworks factory going to have to be non combustible. But if a dwelling unit is attached to it, yeah, the whole building's going to have to be non combustible. So, if, but if it's low, they, you know, a hardware store or something low storage, and, and a residential user, they could build it out of wood. Okay. So it, it it varies. There's a lot of variables. But it sounds like the box is dictated by the commercial use. It, uh, yes, but again, uses. now if they build this wooden box, then we're kind of restricting what they can put in there in the future. So that's why that's why there's a problem. We're building with two sets of codes. Yeah. Two standards. That's why I'm, I'm trying to stay you away from that one and right. two family residential code, which yeah. is blah. I have no, no no teeth in it. Right. You okay. know. So yeah, I'd rather stay in that in international building zone. code. Yes. Agree. So maybe you just stay with three units then. Yeah, I or, agree with that. Or how about we put a footnote next to duplex, and then just call out if there's top of the shop or one or two mixed use to consult the building commissioner. Yeah, I mean you could do something like that as long just as just so when someone looks at it, they go, well, where does it fit? Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Well, so no, actually, what you could leave duplex, we just put duplex, put a star on this one and say it has to be top of the shop or, or has to include a retail, retail. But it'll depend on the mix, the use, right? There's, there's so many variables in the ways we can go about this. But again, duplex, the definition of a duplex is two dwelling units. So that's yeah. two families, so, you know? So, but if you stay away from that and you say two units, two commercial units, that's fine. Yeah. I think we should think about that as say just say two units per building like it says three units per building just take the word duplex out because we're really not doesn't sound like we're going to want that an actual duplex what that term actually means and just say two units per building in the dimensional table instead of duplex yeah. and then two units could be one commercial one residential. But okay, but is that true? Am, am, I, am I following? I, I, yeah, I, I'm just I'm getting stuck in the weeds. So um, <laughs> again, I think the definition of yeah. duplex needs to be defined. And then if you're going to go down to two units, then yeah, take duplex. The word right, duplex exactly. completely out of it. Like I'm saying, just yes. take it completely out of the yes. dimensional two table. units. Go to the two definition units. could drive it to two, yeah. Well, and the definition does say two units. So I think we're fine. Because okay. if we change it here, we're changing it for all the... No, we, we can just oh. change it. But that's uh, fine, whoops. because it still means the same thing. <laughs> God, like, yes. Oh. So two okay? units in a residential area would be a duplex, and that's fine. We can deal with that okay. over there. Well, we, we, can just, yes. we can just take that applicable under BCC. But yeah, you could do it that way, too. NA, NA, not applicable. You could do that, too, if you didn't Yeah, I got that there already. Yep, absolutely. NA. So that just Maybe that's better. Under the size. Yeah. Okay, so we're put in NA instead. NA on, on, on page eight. Yeah. Page eight. 
Yep. And then that way not changing. But then there's change no the guidance. Change the term yes. from in the table six point. That goes back to how we're going to present it. We to change the bigger pool. We'll leave it as duplex. I think the replacing duplex with two units and leaving the five thousand at VCC makes more sense. Because if you take it out, then no one has any guidance reviewing the table to say, hey, I'm on top of the shop with two units mixed use. What, what does it mean? Why not? Why not? I, 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 they, they make both sense, but I, I, I agree. Two, two units, just put two. Just put the and two. And in the definition, you'd be like, hey, I got two units. Yeah, but it's both residential, so you qualify as a duplex. Be you're now residential. So we could put an asterisk here. So just replace in the, in the dimensional table, duplex. Yes. Will be two units. Two units. And then by definition, two units that are both residential is a, you, by definition. You, well, duplex. okay, because you have a single family dwelling, and then we talk because it's, it's allowed in these other uses, in these other air districts. But it won't change. Right. Right, so you're saying two units of what, as opposed to duplex is defined as two residential units. Right, so you have two units. Right. Now, if you so define just, those two units as both residential, out. you're a duplex. If you define two of those units as mixed use, you're now but top that, of the shop. That's what duplex is defined as. Yeah, but what if you're. What if you're mixed use top of the shop? It's not on this table. Okay, right. So, uh, That's mixed use. One unit residential, one unit non. That's what we're trying to fix. So it sounds like we get there if we just re replace duplex with two units. I think Scott's got it. And then put a footnote under? No footnote. No, no, no I don't think you need it so because if you go back into residential, you, you're still in just a duplex. Yeah. Let's, let's go through the scenarios. Two units that are both residential. No. If it says two units there, you're good. It's also called a duplex. If one is a commercial. Re uh, residential and one non-residential, it's two units, you're in the table. That's also top of the shop. Okay. Yeah. If you go to three That's units, That's true, because it does say residential unit located in the same building as non-residential use, where the non-residential use occupies the ground floor and the residential use occupies space above the ground floor. Is what, top of the shop? Yeah. Yes. yes. And that could be two residential, three residential. It so where, where are we putting top of the shop anywhere? Or are we just making No, so units? just like we're taking duplex out of here, we're leaving duplex in the definitions. Just yeah. like top of yeah. the shop is in the definitions. And then we replace it with two units. And yeah, then you right either right. get with two units, you end up as a duplex, or you end up as top of the shop. Mm. Yep, that solves it. So this will be so here, right? And then you can go here the either to duplex. Yes, then in the table. Duplex is still a no. Duplex is still duplex a no in the demand. No. Yes. Okay. Right. Because but it's one or two family building. Yeah. Because we have top of the shop as the yes. Okay. So we're just basically saying the terminology is you can do two units, but you can't do a duplex. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. In this district. Yep. Right. So okay, we it. want to put that under no. um, top of the shop multifamily. And then call two units. I think make, make this neck down here. Leave that alone. Just take that not applicable, and because the duplex we're not allowing, but to just put top of the shop or um, yeah, but I think but we are two we are allowing a two unit here. So you need the five thousand for the two unit that is not classified as a duplex. Right. But how, okay, how can you say it's here and then say it's under duplex? We're saying if, it's not. If duplex. you cross this out, right? Right. And you put two units. Per building, per building. Okay. Then the That's use table says you can't have a duplex capacity. there, so your NA shows up in the use table. But where, where, where do I find what a duplex can do? In the definitions, right? You yeah, in the definitions. definitions. Alan will show two, you. Two res is this two residential units? That's what right. that means. Duplex means two residential you're units. You're taking it out of here is what I'm saying. You don't have that here. You could just have two units. No, but we have it back further in, in, in where it's allowed, back in the use, allowed use. No, yeah, so if these are the definitions, right, and we have a duplex in the definitions, Top of the shop in the definitions, right? Mm -hmm. Here you have two units. You would go to the definitions just to find out which one you fall under. This will say strictly residential. That will say one residential, one non-residential. Right. Uh, so you'd still be required to do the commercial mix. No, but that, okay. And then when we say, okay, well, I have two units. In that, Village Commercial, this isn't look, applied because the use table doesn't allow a duplex here. But, okay, but look at the rest of these. Where do I go for finding these? No, the, those it's are still those there, right? Two, so for two units R80 would be 80,000. Is yeah. it two unit commercial? Is it two units residential? Two units is residential. Residential. No, but he's saying it's not. He's saying it could be. Well, that would go back to the use table. Can you have. Right. Right? Yeah. What's right. The use, use table, table says yes. There's duplex. Right, so yeah, but two units. So you could have a duplex here, 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 but not here because the use table doesn't allow it. it. Cleans it up better the way Scott's doing it, I think. And then the commercial use table would have it the other way around, right? I, okay, I, I. Or if we just completely eliminated duplex from the bylaw and then changed the use table to two unit. 
Yeah, well, duplex is a term, one yeah. and two family yes. home. Yeah. yeah I mean, but, and it applies everywhere else. So, you know, I, I think rather than trying to convert everything back to, to change it, it, it works everywhere else. Is that right? The duplex language works for the other? In the other residential units, in the other residential yeah. uh, districts. Yes. Yes. We also have it in, in the VC, in the uh, Village Commercial now, for some reason. Is that um, special permit? Uh, is it, I, I, I've just seen the... Yeah, it's special uh, permit. Special permit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't really want to recover. It's special permit in actually every single one. Yeah, so if we change this to units, this would drive to not an acceptable use if you define your two units as a duplex. But if you define your two units as a top of the shop, that number then applies because the use table allows it. So that would be not applicable, or it would be what would you use? You leave I would, I would leave the, the five thousand. And if you tried to jam, if you tried to then say, "Hey, I'm a two-unit duplex," I have five thousand. No, it's not true because it's not allowed there. A two-unit classified as a duplex is by use not I, I got, allowed. I got to tell you, my, my reading this when I'm looking at this, I look at these units as all being residential units. Two, three units per building? No, you could have three commercial buildings. I, that's not what this says. Three units doesn't talk. That's, that's I think it right. looks that way because it's a subset under duplex. It's all, it's foreign, all, that's yeah, why, that, because that's it looks like it it's we, indented. I, I've always it understood is. it to be residential. It, 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 it is residential. Overall. We don't have anything commercial here in terms of square footage. So unit, maybe we need a definition for units. Can be any commercial or uh, residential structure. I, I, uh, I, my only one thing, I, I would try to isolate the VCC and we can make anything we want to talk about it the way we've done the other ones because the other one because you start changing those definitions around that I'm not sure we'll use duplex and whatever else if it's allowed there if, it's, if we don't want to change it that's fine but I think these definitions are referring to buildings but we can we can make a star for VCC and say the, the number of units in the building can comprise of commercial and and residential and they have to have at least one commercial unit something like that and deal just for that star on, on the VCC for all of them and then we're isolating you know the VCC as opposed to the rest of them and I, I, just saying two units would scare me and, and it well, doesn't read really uh, just about this or what if we what if we did put a footnote here that refers back to that language on page three which talks about the need to have a village center for no dwelling unit Internal space associated with a dwelling unit shall occupy any first floor portion. But if we guided them back to that. Did say any? I thought it was a portion, a, por a percentage of the first floor. Well, we do uh, later on in the paragraph, it does. Mm, okay. But what if we refer to back to that? Must, you know, must comply with uh, 4.1. Well, clearly the duplex, as we talked about it, we don't want here. We don't want to put a duplex here. Correct. So we can say not applicable, and then we can put down uh, two units per building, and then provided uh, there's an additional commercial space or something like that, and then the rest would work. Well, I, or doesn't that pick it up here on Paul when you say you know so much of the space already has to be uh, commercial? Right. Yeah, so it already it already covers it here in the wording you added last right. week. I think this is just a good way of connecting back to that language. So we can say what multifamily and because there's nothing for for top of the store. Uh, I would just I top would just of the shop language. Put a footnote under uh, end table six point two and say something along the lines of must comply with uses must comply with uh, one seventy five four point four point one. Yeah, isn't that a given though? That's why. Well, it is. It's just a navigation for people okay. to find it in different. You know, because sure. this is kind of scattered about. Yep. Is, oh, what if we did that? Yeah, especially once it's lumped in with everything else. Like, we're just looking at the applicable parts of this but, but do we want to, but, but, but at that point, you're saying if it's three units, it's no longer really a duplex. So not, do we want no, to call it, we call it multifamily slash top of the store for that section and then say three per building, two per building, and, and make that footnote? Would that do it? If no, you just use the word units, they could apply to anything. Dwellings, commercial, I think that's the whole idea is, is to entice as many different um, uses as possible. Yeah, units just means like how, how many number, yeah. operating space. 
in a so building. It's, so it's, that still tests out if you have a seven units per building, and they're all commercial. No, it doesn't. Would the, do you care if it, if I get a building, I'm going to make three stores out of it? It make depends what it, out of it. If Does it's in a matter? commercial zoning, none of that would apply anyway. We, we don't have any dimensions under the commercial. Right. So, but, so yeah. this is village commercial. Correct. So if so I yeah, you, you were trying to entice businesses to come here, so yes, that would be great if they went all seven units as commercial. It'd be great offices or right. you know yeah. anything. Why not? They would need just one residential. Right? But yeah, I mean, the, <laughs> this is just talking about. Yeah, why not? It, why not? It, this is allowing them to do that. Yeah. So if the doctor wanted to live there and own the building and rent the rest out his office space, why not? So you could do six non-residential and one residential. Sure. And qualify as top of the shop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? So I'd leave it as units, yeah. Yeah, I would. Yeah. I like the units. So yeah. we're going to leave it at two units per building, three units per building. So we'll keep but the 5,000 square foot or two units per building, right? But then in the back in the use table, we're going to say no for duplex. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you're if you're okay, I think it makes sense to go back to the 6.2 table. We have to call it something. Call the three units, two units per building something. Is that multifamily slash top of the shop? It could be anything. I think what I think what would happen is this would move well, over. Well, and, and keep in mind if we start doing that now. Remember, this is a this is a table for all the zoning districts that we're amending, right? So if we start getting into top of the shop, top of the shop, we're only talking about for here. Uh, and village commercial. Right, and village commercial. That might start to muddy the waters. That would muddy the waters if we started calling. Well, it. but you can't see if you're using units as as commercial or residential. It doesn't apply in forty in our forties. Which is what you have now, but, but the use table would have to permit it then, right? Yeah, well, you, have to, you have to meet both the dimensional table and the yes. use table. Right. Four and six, yeah, you have to meet both. In fact, that's the third, first thing I do when I take in a review, review. We see that it complies with zoning, and then we get into the codes. So zoning first always. So if there's seven commercial units, do you want to dictate that they need 10,000 square feet as well? You can't, you can't have seven commercial. Okay. You want to just say that? seven and up? You know? well, but it wouldn't, it's not allowed, right? If you then look at the commercial use tables. Well, we don't ever break down the, the use tables by, by units. It's the commercial is the commercial use. No, but the only time it's coming in is with this mixed use that we have now that we have never had before. Right. And the only way you get there is you have to have at least one residential. Right. So you can have six non-residential and one residential, but you can't have seven commercial. You can have seven non-residential, right? But there's no use for that. The use table doesn't have that. But if you're calling it a unit, it being a commercial unit, okay, it doesn't... It just do you want to keep the village core primarily residential on the second floor? Is that what you're trying to entice? Or do you want to have office space available? No, it could be both. Oh, it could both. Be, I would say it could be both. Yeah. Then why not? The then just keep it. Floor. Yeah, I agree. It's the first floor, so if people wanted to build office on the second floor, why would we stop it? Right. And then have mixed use and office space and, 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 and apartments or whatever. Yeah. Because those are, those are allowed uses. So then just call it units then. I think, yeah, let them put whatever unit they want in there. Well, that's what's here. So we're getting rid of the term duplex and then just calling it units. Yeah, I agree. And we have to have a definition of units, I guess, is the. Yeah. I wouldn't think so. Maybe not. Maybe it might help. Well, you're just going to put anything goes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty much. You just put just clear. And then zoning and building codes would take over. What, what could actually go in there? So. Well, it, it, I still think it really goes back to dwelling units. That's what you're talking about, because you say a unit. What's a unit in a, in a dwelling? Is it a? Is it a? I don't know. I just never seen commercial number of spaces per building. Would that help you if we change the word unit to space? Number of spaces or? No, that didn't work. It. Number of tenants. I mean. Mm -hmm. I mean, units the cleanest way to go. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then just define I unit as any, you know, dwelling yeah. or commercial space. I think right. Alan's right. Maybe we just need a definition and, of and unit. We also, you know, we also already allow multiple buildings 
preferred lot mm -hmm. in the commercial and industrial districts, and we're proposing to do the same thing here. So I think we're covered. Yeah. I think we're covered. Yep. So, but so that would be the one time we would be saying no to a duplex. You could technically have a building out front on the street and have a duplex way out back. Well, we that would be a no. You just said that no. That would be the, no that'd be the, right. that'd be the one time no where it would be acceptable if, it, if we said yes. Yeah, but we're not. Well, we're saying no. Yeah. That'd be th yeah. Would that be three units, though? We have a duplex yeah, in the same. back. But that's what we're trying to get away from. Because if they get away they're from. generally in the same building. Same building. Yeah. Well, we want to stay away from that residential code again because yeah. it's lesser. Yeah. And I have no teeth in it. Yeah. yeah. So. But if we say stick to saying duplex as a no, makes it easier. You can't yeah. Build a duplex, but if you allow the two units per building, that tells you you can do it, but not in the form of a duplex. Mm -hmm. It could be above ground, above above first floor. So much for six thirty. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we can always just move the meeting down a book, you know, well, somewhere. Yeah. Um, are, but are you okay, too, if we just add this footnote under uh, like in table 6.2, just refer to say that yeah, uses I think that's must good. comply with section 4. Yeah, maybe put it on that yeah. use top left in the table there, put the footnote in there. Well, if I if I put it next to VCC, it yeah, needs it'll apply to every to every yep. row underneath it. So for my next simple, go back. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this would be the easy yeah. one. I'm good luck. It's well, good. I, no, we're having good conversation. Is that the wrong? No, then at the uh, town meeting. <laughs> no, right. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna no, get it all this out. Is, this is all good. I mean, you, as you guys know, this is the stuff you deal with. So we yep. want to flush it out. Um, the next one, I know we had. Uh, uh, talked about uh, so on page 12 when we talked about the thresholds to kick a uh, development a proposal to a, a, a planning board reviewed site plan or the threshold that goes underneath that and I'm going to contradict what I said last week because um, I said last week no we should keep it at 10 and my thought process was there well if we start going above that that gets to be a lot of parking we don't want that and then I realized 10 spaces is not a lot. And if we just keep the threshold at 10, at 10 spaces, you know, pretty much every project that could come in could come over 10 units and it could, you know, <coughs> then it would have to go to the planning board for a full review. And I'm just asking to consider whether or not we should increase, if we could increase that number to say 20. And as I look at that number too, I start to go, why is the parking criteria critical for determining if it's a site plan? But I'll leave that to you since you all deal with that. Let me ask the question. Because in reading reading ahead, yeah. there's a parking review. It's very limited to only when there's a site plan a review process is when you have a parking review. Well, site plan or site plan that you all would review and even the site plan, because remember we added language to say if you're under that threshold, the, the, you have to the go town to staff. is still required to meet the requirements well, under the, well, the technical language still talks Neat. about site plan review, so you have to change that. Okay, so but beyond, that. beyond that, your, your Article 7 parking requirements, yeah. are those still in effect? Or are you, Absolutely. Are you disregarding them? Absolutely. So those, those are still there. Right. So, so even, even after the, the, the permanent granting authority planning board issues, it, we still go back and check, you know, for zoning. I and know, make sure I that 7.1 is picked up. Was to, to reduce the, the parking requirements for this area or to eliminate them based upon what they can say they can provide. So I don't know well, sure I, what I, to... I would say reduce them. Well, I don't know but, that but, we, but we who, find an example. But who, but, but who determines that reduction, I guess, is the question. I mean, the way it stands now is basically, are they required to comply with uh, Article 7 that says that has uh, the parking... What we have here? Yeah. No. No. Uh, why? Um, because we're saying what we had written in was the parking study is the re is the replacement for the parking requirements in our Article, article Seven is the uh, for parking. Right. Where does it yeah. say that? Does it say that? Yeah. It was added um, uh, under the well. If, if we can get there after, but it is in on page um, page sixteen <coughs> that yeah, there is a uh, um, right under. Letter G parking report. The second sentence says site plan applications in the village center are not subject to the off street parking requirements of Article 7. And then the par parking report shall include. 
is the item. So, so, uh, so uh, just from risk of, so, I know so, we're going to so, get there. So, but, okay, yeah. the, the, I've got a problem with that in concept, but, but just the language itself. If there's no site plan application, then they, then the parking applies. It says site plan applications are not subject to off-site off -site parking requirements. But if there's no site plan application required, then the parking requirements. That something that's small that you both would, would review. So right. what Orange saying is small enough, have then there's not going to be a lot of parking spaces required. So then we're going to, they're right. going to. Well, but that's why we added the language last week that said um, um, that that we would um, review it for all of these conditions, uh, all of these uh, 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 under 15.6, all of these, all of these standards that we would still hold a, even a small project to the yeah. same level of right. requirements. But, I yeah, because we ran into the issue where, in site plan approval applicability, we had a residential use and we had non-residential use, but we right. didn't have the mixed use. So we were trying to modify A and B to right. clean up the shop. Yep, right. exactly. So said, let's leave those alone right. and create village center core. Here's the requirement when we want the yeah. site plan. Yeah. So we could probably remove that number three there, the 10 or more parking spaces. I think maybe what we need to do is not we remove it, but change it to where we don't have top of the shop. It doesn't meet any other criteria. What's the only other condition? It's when someone's going to convert it to a, par a parking garage or a parking lot, right? No. If it's in Village Center Core District and I want to put a parking garage up, a site plan approval wouldn't be required, right? Well, I guess it would be a non-residential use. Right. It's not residential. And it would have 10 or more spaces, so it would be okay. Right. And all, all I'm saying is I think 10 is a low number. If, if Again, if, if we can incentivize the smaller projects to go through a, a quicker review, that, you know, then could it be 15 or 20? Like right now we say 2,500 square feet or 10 parking spaces. What if we said five thousand? Raise, you know, that's what we have across the board now. But what if in this area we said five thousand square feet and twenty parking spaces? Just so it's still in the bylaw right above it. Non-residential okay. use, twenty-five hundred or more feet, and and then ten parking spaces. So you still have it. It's just in the village core right. that we're looking to get that rid of. Yeah. So if we if we take it out and someone now is village center core. Yep. Yeah. And I want to put 100 parking spaces and I want a top of the shop. Well, it's more than 10 to 5,000 square feet for well, 100 parking spaces, so it's going to come on site plan. Maybe we'll go back to the plan. Both of those trigger a site plan. Oh, the top of the shop would. Top of the shop does in 100 spaces. Yeah. Yep. I mean, if you're putting, yeah. And, so it's, and we added language here. We added this. Um, top of the shop is the only mixed we, use. We, 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 can I? A lot, right? Can I? Um, we added some language uh, under five. That talk about if it if it falls under the building commission and the planning director must ensure compliance with 15.6, and we added and may still require site plan review under Article 15 if the building commission or planning director feels existing complexities within the uh, with the site warrant such action. Um, oh, I should have added by the planning board. Um, so what we want to be able to do is be able to say if something, a situation came along that we feel, or our you know, successors, whatever, down the road, feel like there's something really weird or, or, or we didn't anticipate this, that we feel it would be more appropriate to get it to a public review, that that provision that we've added allows oh, us that. to do that. You know, what, what if, for example, a project comes along and we hear from a lot of the butters on a project that they don't like it, that this could give us you know, if they're raising valid points, this would give us the ability to say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna make them we're gonna make you go through a full planning board site plan review. Okay, two things. And if we're gonna keep it, let's if, keep in mind too. If you're talking about that much parking and it was say in a structure, ten thousand square foot building still requires a special permit. So if that doesn't go away. Right. So and if it's mixed use, that falls under one, so it's still hit site plan approval. Yeah. So we could take the with par, ten parking comes out, right? Nothing could slip through. Okay. Um, the the language that was proposed um, in the adoption draft proposal included, in addition to the things you have, all multifamily development at slash buildings and any proposed new main building on the VCC. I, I'm not sure if, why we wouldn't have that. 
that was. Um, yeah, right here. This is his, this is how he rewrote it. No, this is what was in here. The draft zoning package that they provided to us. Yeah, yeah. but this is. Did you get the one you left here? No, no. This is the draft. So this yeah, that's is what the was one that the that from last time. From the last. Yeah, no, no. The this is what this is what the, the that was in the the, the village the commercial draft. proposal draft the uh, findings yeah, and the draft that they gave us. Oh, right. the, the oh, oh, language oh, they gave oh, us. oh, 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 Orrin. Okay, I'm following. I, I got you. It, over, it said all multifamily develop, development slash buildings and all uh, any proposed new building, new main buildings in the Village Commercial Core. They also had any new, newly proposed or expanded top of that shop buildings. But this included any new building, or any new building or any multifamily yeah, building. I remember it. I'm just. I mean, if you want to, if you wanted to add this, I, I didn't include that because I thought, you know, if we were looking at size thresholds, that would be the key. But if you know, that that's all where, um, you know, the intent there was just to. Well, I, I just but, I like yeah. it because it, it's it's new, something new, and, and if it's if parking is going to be sensitive, I mean, if it's an existing building and you guys want to review parking with them, that's fine. But if for a new development, a new building, a new top of the shop thing. I think it really needs to get some discretion from well, the top. Top of the shop is. Well, but any new building. It doesn't have to all be top of the shop. It could be whatever, because we're leave, doing buildings with, you know, close um, yeah. setbacks and all these other things that I don't know why we wouldn't include that as being a site plan review. Because at that point, any new principal building. It's still a special so. permit, right? No. Pretty much? No. 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 Because then, you know, any new principal building, we might as well we're off a size threshold because if it's a new principal building it's everything it's everything i mean you could do that but keep in mind you know you might even the way that's written if a person came in with a 2,000 square foot building a new building that's subject to site plan review and you know if i would just say that we're trying to incentivize the redevelopment in this area okay. so that's all can I just throw something out? And I don't want to take everybody off the, off the track. But in looking through some of the, 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 when you go through the specifics, I mean, we're going from bylaws which are pretty open and, and, uh, and deep, but these, when we get into this area, they're really very specific things that you're looking for. Yeah. And, you know, almost, I'm almost intending to have some kind of a formal administrative review process. So you guys, whoever that group would be, would really go through this with a fine tooth comb because I can't see our board going through these type of criteria. Well, we, we, we do this with pre-construction meetings. In well, fact, we have one I'm saying, but Friday, maybe right? if we almost make it a requirement, so probably somebody coming in there and seeing this and seeing that and saying, give me a better concept, having some group that they can work with to develop it. We, we do that with department heads. We, we bring them in, we sit them down, and everybody go, gives them what they need to, to comply with it. But if we, goes. like, I've seen jurisdictions where they formalize that process and they make the site plan or a specific or the special permit process more expedited. I, I guess what we're trying to do is, is expedite the permitting process to entice more commercial properties here. And as the town grows and these departments grow, these department heads will have a little bit more authority and more staff to deal with that. That's, that's, the, that's the bigger pitch that we're looking for. Right. We're not trying to pull it away from the planning board right now, no, but, but just on the smaller projects right now, just to entice them, the no, business to come in. That's, but I'm that's saying some of this criteria is so specific, I don't know that the board itself Know, sitting through some of the, the way we've handled some of these projects to go through some of the specifics of you know, the, the, of what you're having, I don't know who's best to do that. Maybe it's the question. Maybe well, we would you have between staff and peer review to assist you with it. Well, I mean, the, we, we we wrote the language a little more open. Um, there's plenty of examples where language is very detailed about the dimensional, you know, on the on the architectural side of it. I only caution against that because that gets so rigid that you get waiver after waiver when you get something like that. So this is exactly. more about when we get into the designs, design aspects, I think that this, the way it's written, it's pretty clear what we're trying to get at. Do we put in the details there to say that, you know, um, you know, sidewalk shall be eight feet? Some codes do, I, I, you know, but... You, you, get, you get into there. New England style homes, you know, New mm -hmm. England style, you know, consistent with the, there's stuff in there that is the, 
as a developer, I'd be scared because you're coming back and I'm not sure who I'm talking to. And if I got to go by you and then by somebody else, I'm trying to, as you said, give them a process that gives them a little bit more comfort. And maybe, you know, uh, and if they do that, we can expedite the process at our end. Well, a lot of qualified builders actually read through these parameters and then come to us with a set of plans already you know, designed around these parameters. So then we come in and say yes or no, and then help them move forward. This isn't going to comply, or if they come to us blind, then we, we have to guide them to this. But most qualified people come in with something already established around these. But we can just you know get back to this ten okay. space at least for now, and well, then can, can, before can, these become well, part of the discussion. Can, after well, this. Yeah. Can, well, the other thing is, I, I like to defer that till we deal with parking, because for me that that, that ties into it in terms of. What? We're talking about a, a, a threshold for I mean, how you get there, I get. But, but, but I guess my person is without without any criteria saying there's a minimum. Um, I, I don't know what, if there's less than 10 parking spaces. I don't, what's required? If they only have two parking spaces and they have a big building. But it's already. I mean, if, if, where? if you have a big building, then it trips. If they have a 5,000 square, square feet. And they, they okay, they have 4,000 square foot building and two parking spaces. Are we okay with that? Well, that's what we're trying to do is, is reduce the amount of parking within right. this village core so that it, it makes it more walkable. But who, and then there's but, parking but, but, out behind. But if it's not subject to a review, who makes that review? It, it, we review it. We review yeah, it. We review it. They have to get their bill. They have to get and they still have to comply with 15.6 or whatever that. There's yeah. still specs in here. Yes, that they still have to comply with. I come with. and I have a small restaurant and a single family house up stock. You're going to be by the number of seats in the restaurant. Oh, you can. No, you're not. Yeah. They're saying that you're not. No, you are. No, you still yes, you are. Today. You still have to comply. It says it right here. You still have to comply. No. This, you just said that they don't have to comply with the site plan review. Ensure compliance with 175.15.6. That's, not, even 15. 15. That's 6. not site plan review. But 15.6 says, what you just told me, was no subject or, to, not subject or. to off-street parking requirements under 7. Right, because what we're saying is when you do the study, you're required to use the Institute of Transportation Engineers parking and, and, and traffic studies to determine the trip generation. So those get updated more, much more frequently than ours do. I, I don't even know when this our parking standards have last been updated. My guess is probably 30 years ago. So they, these standards don't, the parking standards don't go away. It's just using a different way that we've been than what we're used to using. Okay. This is a or this is a standard a lot of communities use. You just the the, the, the Institute of Transportation Engineering has trip generations. Is that parking they standards? Do parking. So you're saying they're going to apply with those parking standards? They, you think they're less than what we have now? I don't know, but I would assume they're more accurate than ours. They get they get peer reviewed. They they get updated after, you know, when when projects. As projects get approved, they study them and they update based on what they're seeing in, in current trends. Again, I, 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 the, the, no, I this, mean, I agree. I mean, that's a, that's a this is industry a, standard. No, the, no, this is a report. They have to report yeah. what the industry standard is. It doesn't say they have to do it. Yes, they do. They, we, we require a parking study to be submitted with the application. Okay. And then what's the parking requirement? Right there, right? right parking right. demand, including peak demand, That's shall be included. That's what the parking included. report says. Right. So, they give so the parking report. report, so maybe it's the, it's the, you just think it's a piece of paper, they just have to give them, they don't have to abide by it? Is that what you think the report is, Oren? That's what the report says. That's what it says. But Oren, this is going to give, actually, the board even more flexibility because, you know, when a project comes in, look at Kelly's place. I'm gonna, I'll give you an example. You're familiar. Look at Kelly's place. Mm -hmm. They probably met the standard by parking per per table. But as you know, it doesn't always, she's had very successful business. It, those numbers don't always lead to a good result. Okay. Well, so let me, let me this is giving, so, so Warren, if this, if this comes to the planning board, you're gonna have a chance much more than you have now to, to determine parking spaces. You can look at a much more thorough analysis of parking, how they came up with those numbers, rather than, oh, your code says this, oh, okay. And then you're you're bound by it. You're bound by that number, and you may be going, that's too little, we know it's too little, but you know what, but that's what your code says. So we're trying you, to give you more tools. Let me ask you a question. In any of the communities that you've looked at for this type of housing, yeah. have you seen where there's no municipal parking lots and no parking on the streets? Yeah. I, Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, go go to like Bristol, Rhode Island, or Warren. I mean, okay. Very little. They have on street parking, but well, that's what I'm saying. But they have, in some cases, no parking on site. So most of the places, most of the times, in towns like that, you have to park on the street. So right. Well, there's no here. We have no on street parking. Right. Uh, we have no government provided parking lots. And we have a, a traffic yeah. crazy position. So you can have people, to, if they want to come down here looking for a spot, we're, you know, it, it's going to be kind of nuts. You got, you got a traffic situation with people who can't find parking. I mean, why I think you, we. Why are you saying they wouldn't find parking? Where are they going to park? We would require parking. We would still be requiring adequate parking. And are the study would show that. Give them a pass on this? That's not the intent behind it. We're trying to make sure they, that they have thought through what uses they think they're going to have and what their parking need is, and they should they need to justify it. But it doesn't mean that that plan that comes in, the parking report that comes in, gets rubber stamped. It gives us a chance to look at it, look at the assumptions, and negotiate. I think it gives us more room to negotiate than our current standard, which says you have uh, one parking, whatever it is, whatever parking based on tables, They've met it, okay, that's it. We're done, we're done. They've met the site plan requirement. This gives us more discretion to say we agree or we don't agree. And we're still talking anything over 5,000. Anything, I mean, anything under 5,000, we're talking. Right. right, only the smaller the buildings. How much are you gonna get? Right. Probably you're gonna get under 5,000. Right, so how many parking spaces do we actually need? Yes, so it's just the smaller buildings that we're looking to take out of that orange. And then everything else goes through the, um, the, the review process. And we're still going to review it, still to the same standards. Yeah. You're just trying to expedite this, the, the permitting process. That's all this does. Doesn't doesn't rubber stamp anything or take any uh, requirements away. So where does it say that you can can be accomplished to demonstrate reason access? This is only on the circuit. I'll, I'll clean up that language when we get back to it. Let's let's go back to your language on this other section. I just think you need some cleanup on it. You say five the proposals that you mean do not fall under the thresholds? Where, where are you? I'm looking at five and C, back to where we were. I'm page oh, 12. 12. Okay. Yeah. Should it be okay. that do not fall under the thresholds? I guess, I guess well, I was going to say fall under, underneath, that don't rise up to those that fall under those. So what, what, what oh. That do not fall under the thresholds. That do not fall, that, that do not. Do not fall under the well, thresholds would mean they're above the thresholds. Right. Is the section right that it's referencing? No, it's not. It should be you yes. know one through number one through four. Is that what you're trying to say? Instead of A oh, through. Oh, I'm sorry. I changed. I. One yeah. seven five fifteen three C C and it's one, one, one through four. I changed it because it was. A, it looked weird to me to have a you know two two uh, letters next to each other, so I just changed the them to one two three four five. So I'll change those. One through four, so maybe just say for proposals that don't fall under the above. <laughs> or just remove that whole section and say the building commissioner and planning director must ensure compliance and may still require site plan review. Yeah, no, this is well, these require site plan review one through four. Yeah, and then you could say the building commissioner and planning director must ensure compliance. And may still require site plan review under article for what? The, just for anything that they determine they want to have a site plan. Well, well no, 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 because then right because yes, that's, that's why we want to say objectives if you don't to be met. trigger one of these three, uh, four, then they can require it. Right. So just you don't have to say hey these four, just, those four are there. And then just say the fifth one is for any reason that the planning board or the commissioner decides. Right. That's what you. So just no, no. For, 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 um, if you say. If you say that the, the building commissioner and planning director may still require site plan review. But it's only it? if you're going to come in at 4,999 square you want feet. To say in all other cases? Or nine or less parking spaces the way it's written right now. Then right. it would only go to Chris and Paul. And then they would have to determine if it should come to the you planning want to say board. In, yeah. in all other cases? Building five in all other cases? That make, does that do the same? Well, in all other cases, what? In all other cases, as, as required by mm -hmm. building commissioner and no, planning they, director? One, they, 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 these, are the, these are where site plan is required. 
Um, okay, so no. yeah, one through four is how site plan is required. And you're, we're trying to write five as a catch-all. Five is yeah. the catch-all, yeah. exactly. Need a catch -all. So, but only a catch-all by, by the, the building commissioner. Where those are, where those aren't required. Aren't met. Yeah. One through four. But that's given though, right? Because it's the fifth one. Um, I'm not. If you, well, if you I, don't meet one, two, three, or four, I, I would say Scott, I might, five is the catch-up. As, as a reviewer of this, that might throw me off going, what does this mean? I think if we, if we go in all other cases, or I was trying to say, if you, don't meet, if you don't meet or exceed these other thresholds, then it comes just okay. to staff. Yeah, so, so you could say for to, proposals that don't meet or exceed these threshold, the thresholds of 175-13, 15.3.c. Seems very wordy. One through five, or one through four, <laughs> then whatever. I mean, it is a little wordy, but it. Let's, let's it say references. we had a four thousand square foot, two unit, and it didn't meet one, two, three, or four. Right. 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 The fifth one wants to be written to qualify for that. So you right. just say, any other reason determined by yep. those two guys. So if we just say in all other cases the thresholds yeah. of. Just say in all other cases as yeah as. Requested the building by the building commissioner and planning and director. Planning director. Okay. In all of the cases, the building commissioner must interpret plans. You know, so that means that would mean that the two of you could at any point in time say site plan right. review is required. But I'm saying I'm also adding after the word says require site plan review. I'm adding by the planning board. Yep. And that's only in the village center core. Right. Yes, that's all under yep. C, which is the BCC. Yep. Are you going to add the multifamily development and the proposed new building? Well, that's up to you because that's up to you all because I say if you add that, you're basically now triggering everything to go for a full site plan review. Well, any new building. I mean, well, right, that, any yeah. new building. Right. Well, yeah, we have one, all newly proposed or expanded top of the shop housing. That's just top yeah, of the shop. That's so as opposed to any, well, any new building. A lot of it's going to be, well, we hope. Well, that's what we hope, right? But but I no. would just say if we added that in, that's going to basically make all of this other stuff kind of that's to me seems to be a catch-all of everything. What, what's the, what what's the language again? Can you just all multifamily developments or buildings and any proposed new main building. Isn't that part A then? Residential use, proposed. three or more attached residential units? But that doesn't apply to village commercial. Oh, I mean, yeah. that, that's going to be 5,000 square feet or more though, isn't it? Yeah. But, we don't but why wouldn't it? I mean, could get a small lot, square foot? I don't know. Uh, we're, I just say, well, then would, you guys should just, just look at it. That a smaller building, we should just try to Give it a, you know, uh, a look see because that, that's going to be low money. We yeah. don't want to make it astronomically if you, if difficult. If you read that, that, right, it says here up under applicability, subject to site plan approval if they exceed a specific limit in any one of the following categories: residential use, which is going to be multifamily, multi three or more. It's not saying if you are multifamily in village center core, A doesn't apply. It's saying. A still applies to you. That's true. We'd get multifamily under one. C is there only when or it's a. mixed use, right? That's how we got to wanting C to exist, is we had residential, non-residential. We didn't have, C was intended to be the mix of residential and non-residential. Yeah. So if you're building a multifamily, that would be residential. Yeah. Agree. So A and B is going to be applied to the village commercial as well? Yep. Okay. Yep. It has to be. That applies to all uses, and C is just subject in the village core district, right? For the mix, where we're trying to define the mixed use. So I guess conceivably if you had a 4,000 square foot building and it was all retail. That would come that up would fall. in front of that us. That would also trigger yeah. under B. Well, no, because we're seeing non-residential use is five thousand in the BCC. But if it's, but wouldn't it then fall under the full non-residential use? Twenty-five hundred right, exactly. square feet. Right, exactly. Would it fall into B? Mm. Non-residential, two fifty or over. To twenty-five hundred yeah. and over. Um, my assumption was it was the five thousand. Unless you want to put in A and B. Excluding village center core. Then when you read residential and like, oh, I'm residential in the village center core. Oh, I don't, I don't, that doesn't apply to me. 
exempt from A and ex I was, I was always assuming when we did this that that's what that meant. Was that you see what C is, from A and B. maybe we just have to clarify that more. Yes, yeah, VCC isn't, doesn't apply under, A and B don't apply to VCC. Well, then if that's the case, then I think Oren's language is going to go back in, potentially. Uh, which language? Like if we like new buildings or multifamily or whatever, because then if a residential comes in that's got three or more, <coughs> how about if you for C you put uh, uh, village center core district, and then in parentheses put um, A and B supersedes A and B or something like that. I mean that's what I was. What we, I thought well, that was my understanding. What we were intending was to separate C from A and B, so VCC would be treated differently than all the other zoning districts. So, I mean, I would be fine to say that that A and B are not applicable here, or superseded, or A and B are superseded. Yeah, I think you got. I think you spelled it out quite clearly, Paul. Let's see. The following shall also be subject to the site plan. Folks are getting tripped up on it, and maybe we need to make it a little clearer. So maybe just add on to the end of that. Leave it as is. The following shall be subject to site plan approval in Village Center Core yeah. and supersede A and B. <coughs> um, myself, I, I'd either like those included or I like the added language for a new building. I mean, understand once it's there and operating, I don't really care as much. But especially when you, you know. I mean, we do have some yeses in the use table on, in the residential use, too. Right. Outside of top of shop, right? I mean, multifamily, bed and breakfast, educational facilities, religious facilities. So, it's, so the language is. Any proposed new main building? Any proposed new main building, yeah, new main building. Or any multifamily dwelling. Main building. Or, yeah. uh, the developments of buildings. And that to me is also not a real clear standard. What's the main building? Exactly. Build two or three buildings on the lot. What's the main one? Higher? Didn't we have that as a, oh, that was, we had frontage as a definition. Um, I mean, we can. Put it in there. I think we could. I think we can get away with the multifamily dwelling one. The new main building. That's just confusing. Because someone will pick their main building to be the tiny one. I mean, like you know what I mean, like. Well, I mean, any new building with five thousand square feet would be required. Anyway. Right. Yeah. Any f if five thousand so square foot or more. That's if right. If the main building is less than five thousand square feet, it is not mixed use, and. It, has one driveway. It's not likely to happen. Someone's building a brand new building. I mean, yeah. So we could put it in there. It'll never ha hit, though, right? Why? Um, you're not. You can. You can put re retail buildings. Four or five. Four forty-five hundred square foot retail store. I mean, it's got a Cumberland Farms. That's under four thousand square feet. <clears throat> Most retailers, they're not going to be, as you know, you're not talking about CVS. If you're talking about a normal retailer, they're going to be 5,000 square feet, maybe less. How about we capture that in five, where it's the catch all for, oh, I guess it wouldn't go to the planning board, right? Right. Um. So, what if we added, under add to number one, all, all newly proposed and expanded top of the shop housing and multifamily? Yeah. How about that? That doesn't. Warren's example, what about uh, your Cumberland Farms? It's 4,500 square feet. Something like that. It's not multifamily. Right. It's under. So he's under 5,000 then. So it wouldn't require one. Wouldn't right. Require it, would go, it would go to Chris and Paul, and then they'd have to determine if they felt like it was necessary to come to the board. So we don't even really need it in there if we have that five in there, right? Right. That's why we're setting the threshold, just trying to keep it simple. So what, 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 what are you going to be doing when it comes, 
you're going for your, let's call it administrative review by you guys. And, yep. and so we don't have site plan review, which would typically allow us to set some times. Do you guys are going to be setting times for operations? Are you guys going to be, you know, is that something, where, where do you see? Hours of operations. Hours of operations and um, looking at traffic, looking, you know, how are you going to? We're looking at traffic. Chris, do you, do you issue building permits? When you're issuing permits, do you have hours of operation? Maybe you're just doing it without? There's a lot of special permits and site plan reviews uh, that are issued by the planning board. Some have hours of operation and some don't. It's all depending on the use and, and what's right. been going on. I so that. That, that's our, so that's they're our. all different. So it's, it, there's not a checklist that's been established. So um, it because of all the different variables. Okay, but th that's why I mean a, for, a formal administrative review gives somebody else aside from us the authority to set conditions for a special permit, for a site plan review. Site plan review talks about conditions. Special permit is. This is the appropriate place to put here in the, in the discretion that we have. But site plan review is basically, you can't deny site plan review unless it's outrageous. It's basically imposing conditions. So the question is, in your review, are you going to be going through and, and looking to take on that responsibility of Absolutely imposing we conditions? Do. Yes, we, we do that anyway. After you do the site plan review at the planning board, it still goes back to all the different department heads. And conservation looks at it, planning looks at it, building looks at it, fire looks at it, board of health looks at it, and it gets hit again. So that's why we're just trying to cut out, we're trying to give you that benchmark where you're saying, well, this is redundant, and we're trying to expedite it. That, that's what this is saying. That's, that's all. So everything that you, you approve in a special permit then goes to a, um, a, a department head and already gets reviewed twice. So we're just trying to, um, again, expedite permitting processes. Okay. I'm talking about site plan review. So we talk about landscaping, protecting the people behind them, we're talking about hours of operation, we're talking about all the things we look at in site plan review. And again, in this situation, as I said, there's, there's aesthetics that we typically are not the greatest people to, to work on. No offense to us, but we typically don't really great, do great with aesthetics. So if there was some administrator review saying, this is the, the look we're trying to get for the center. This is what we're trying to do and work with people. But, the, but there are things that are now discretionary that says they can, they don't have to, but they can. In those situations where they can, are you making those determinations, or should those come back to us to make those determinations? Well, if, if we felt there was a consideration that they should do, and they are telling us, no, we're not doing it, then the language we've written in says, well, we can send it to you to consider, you know, as a full site plan review. And then, but, you know, looking through this, we have, the only thing I don't see in here under site plan review is hours of operation. But, Screening, landscaping, all that's in here. We can make that, but um, you know, I, I don't think it's a stretch for us to talk about. Well, I don't know. I, I would assume we have the ability to talk about hours of operation on the approval. Certainly, we issue building license uh, or, uh, business licenses. There's there's no hours of operation within the zoning bylaws as is right now. Right. There are no noise requirements in as is right now, but we still are imposing those as we go. We still have to because of the different uses and the different variables that, that those, are associated with these different variables. Those requirements come through the planning board on site plan review. I don't know that. But they miss there as well. well um, they might be, they don't, they, we don't do them in every single case. I mean, that, that, but that's, no, but that's it, where the, the criteria in the site plan review, that, that, those are the things we're looking at. And I'm asking, you know, on your side, is that something you're looking at and you're going to be, you know, willing and able to, to take on. Absolutely. Yeah, we're very concerned about what happens to the people around it. Around it. So if not, it gets kicked back to me anyway. Or, or Paul hears about right. it, and then it gets kicked to me or the, the Board of Health, and then we have to pick it up. So we want to pick it up it, it, during the review process. We absolutely. Otherwise, I'm going to have to hear about it and go back out and, and then try to enforce right. it. It's, and, it's and insane. That becomes, and that's a real problem. That's a, it is a major problem. Back and fix a problem that didn't get done during the full site plan review. We deal with that a lot. Daily. So what What if a radical suggestion here? Uh, what if C is written to say that, like, all new and expanded VCC districts shall require a site plan review if the building commissioner and planning director determine so? 
and then such conditions that may require are but not limited to are as follows but not limited to and then list uh, top of the shop housing 5,000 more square feet and just give them some guidance then it's really just on you VCC yeah. is totally with you guys no, I don't think we can do that I, I mean that's I don't mind giving them some stuff to do, but I, I think we got to keep some element of control over it. And then these, are the, I mean, if we have to stick with these, we can stick with these. And we're not and trying to take that control away from you. We're just trying to set a minimum threshold where it, it, okay. it takes you automatically, and then if it's yeah, smaller right, than right. that, we can just push it through. First that's of all, one of the biggest things in here that's probably going to keep most things up to the planning board is the top of the shop. That's what we're trying to get. I mean, we might get, it's possible we could get a single-use commercial building under this, but otherwise... You know, 5,000 square foot building is not that difficult to build. I mean, you know. So I, I would, I, I could be wrong, uh, but I would expect that we we'll probably not run into this situation for a long, long time. No. Um, I still think a lot of it's still going to go to the board, but it's just really an instance of where we do have a smaller project that comes in and we're able to handle it administratively. Well, really, and that's only going to be if there's a yes in the use table. Because mm -hmm. if there's a special yeah. permit, then they're not going to do it. Yeah. I mean, you're really ending up talking about a very limited number of uses, potentially, too. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it's right. really only the whys and the other and under the size threshold. Right. So it, it is, it is the, the purview is quite limited in nature already. Yeah. Okay. Right? Yeah, the other piece is just put everything in VCC through site plan. Since it's a new thing, if you want to control it, but I thought the idea was to avoid that right. complexity mm -hmm. for someone that yeah. wants to do yeah. it. Yeah. are going under the assumption of trying to incentivize and you know, one of the biggest things, one of the most critical things that developers look for is, is timing and you know delays that happen by nature of, of having to <coughs> That's what we're, look, the bigger projects, anything about 5,000 or triggers one of these others, then, then they come here. So, so the changes we're making for C, we're adding at the end of the first line the language that says and supersedes A and B. And then we are removing yeah. the 10 parking spaces, number three. And then we're cleaning up the language for number five. In all other cases, the building commissioner and planning director must ensure compliance with 15.6. And they still require site plan review by the planning board under Article 15 if we feel existing complexities. So you're removing any parking all, all, any parking at all? Because you have 5,000 square feet of floor area. But now most of the, again, Julie's just. The parking would then fall the under S's. five. So all right. the parking. OK, so there's a no level of parking that would require a site plan review? Well, I think not, ultimately not for this, maybe somewhere else in the bylaw. Nothing else other than bylaw, this is what controls. Because <clears throat> right now you're doing away with any parking requirements. Well, I mean, that, that was Paul's initial qu question, right? Like, right. Is, 10 too is 10 too small or is 10 just right? Should be 20, should be 10. Yeah. Like, if we're not, we're not. Isn't so, the eight. intent of the VCC, like, mm -hmm. not every lot has to have parking. Right. Right. This is any more than 10 places. What more. if they want zero? Then they well, wouldn't have to. Under. Then but be you under. can't have zero, really, if you, then you go into your... I don't know the circumstance where we would approve Yeah, the you're going to have right zero, but... So you'd be in... Without some eight, serious shared so shared seven use seven parking. Apply. Why wouldn't seven apply? Because they're saying seven doesn't apply. They said under here, seven doesn't apply. That's, that was the question. <clears throat> I thought we said seven did apply. No, they're using the IT, ITE set standards. That's what they're looking at. It says, but if something came in under 5,000, they would be applying stuff. So. No, it doesn't. It says, this is what they're looking at. It's supposed to provide estimates provided by the IT, e, ITE. And they're saying here that... Um, it is, is that, that That's no, just substituting for 7. No, the, the, yeah, no, no substitute. Yeah. We think it's an upgrade from 7. Which, you know... 7 doesn't have a lot in it, either. I mean, it's not... Well, 7 has some... Some standards and, 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 and here's the other thing. And Chris, we know this. We get a lot of uses that come in that we have to pick and choose which 100%. parking standard in seven applies because 
and that, it, it, it doesn't spell it out. And that's the other reason you need a catch-all. If there's some use that none of us can think that's of, it, do you need could a way you, to? Do me a favor. Could you? I mean, I, I'm getting the I, uh, ITE standards. They published the last one, and it's a manual. Is there a way of getting what those standards show for parking? I'd just like to be curious to see what they have. Okay, right, let's just. Well, I, I, you have to pay. I don't know. I, I'll do my best. Those are do, we work, do we work with any consulting engineers that might be able to provide you with that? We'll ask. <laughs> okay. So just in the, you know, it's second thirty, um, we want to just table this park, the parking right. I mean, the okay. ten spaces or more. But I think we, we, I think that's something we want to take up with the full board. So rather than us beating ourselves up completely, we can, you know, I would rather let's defer to them. We have the the IT the ITE standards, and then I, I, my, I, myself, I'd be more comfortable having the full board discussion. And if everybody's in agreement with it, that's fine with me. But um, I think that's one that's going to be kind I mean, of. I, I think the ten's fine personally. I mean, if this is, if if they've got ten or more, and we want to see consolidation, it gives us control over that. I hate to make it too big, I guess, especially if we're looking for it to be packed in. But at the same time, I see what you're saying, Paul. I mean, 10 is pretty tiny in the grand scheme of things. I, I like the idea of putting it into five. So you'd have basically the three requirements. Any new proposed expanded top shop, 5,000 square feet or more, more than one driveway, or as determined by the building commissioner or planning director. Right? That'd be the other. And if you guys saw it and saw this parking was an issue, then require it. Yeah, we, we would. We'd kick it right up. But I think the three big ones are top of the shop, 5,000 or more, and more than one driveway. Yeah. Can we do top That's of setting the kind of the intent of the VCC. Can we do top of the shop or any multifamily development? Yeah, I've added multifamily. Yeah, oh, I yeah, think yeah. we should add yeah. multifamily personally. Yeah. I got it. And then maybe just table the Maybe you guys just have at it at, at the planning board. That's not added. That's, I mean, I, I think it's something I'd like to bring to their attention and let them, let, we, we can discuss it. You're still going to go over this again. Right? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> You're going to get a second uh, And again. Uh, yeah. So. At least uh, a dozen times more, right? Okay, so we want to uh, move on to. Uh, To the new stuff. Just, just, just one, one quick one going back for just for a second, uh, Paul. Yeah. Um, we, we did go, we talked about the um, the showrooms. We left in uh, wholesale offices. Um, I don't know that I, I was interested in keeping a, a wholesale office that was just selling wholesale. What page are you on? This is on page six. We had wholesale office showrooms. I think the idea was to allow some showrooms, maybe not car showrooms, but showrooms, um, but not necessarily wholesale offices. I don't know if we wanted to. Well, I thought you all said special permit for that. But yes, it's, I'm fine with special permit. Yep. But I don't know that we wanted to. I, we can leave it. My, my sense was yeah. trying to get, deal with uh, um, a retail. Um, yeah. I, did we change it though? I, I, had a, I left it as a no. But the right wholesale. Yeah. Yeah. You could yeah, we made it special just, just permit. Just as an office. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 we thought if there was a showroom with no on site storage, that might be nice. Yeah. yeah. But I don't think we can break that up, Warren, because that's okay. how it reads in the use table now. Yeah. Okay. So I think if we do special permit, then we can kind of pick from that yeah. mix of uses, really. maybe, is a good way to put it, that yes. are listed as one. Because okay. uh, <laughs> I think you're right. I mean, like, I don't think we're going for a wholesale office, but I think we'd go for a showroom yeah. with no site on-site storage, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, so why don't we go to page 13 and see what, um, what questions that... The, Questions, comments. the question I had is whether or not the the the, plan, the planning center vision plan was sufficient. Or I, I'm, I'm not sure. I was looking myself to try and find out where the standards were, and I saw yeah. it just it's just a little bit really kind of vague. It is. Um, I don't know whether we, we want to pull some language out of that and actually declare what the standard is, but throwing somebody into this, we don't know. You know, it, it shows them reconfiguring the, you know, the the common and. But it does sort of talk like, about the need to make it more walkable. I, I agree with you. I mean, it's maybe really maybe. More of a report, but. Maybe we can identify some sections in it. That, you know, 
I, it just seems it, it is kind of vague. So I'm not sure that it's helpful in terms of creating a standard. Um, I would rather keep it general. Uh, you know, if you point at something, you might, there may be other aspects of it. It gives us more information about what's going on. Yeah. Um, I think it's better to keep it general. Yeah. 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 But I mean, we didn't, I mean, the plan was, you know, it kind of looked at that intersection area and then just gave some overall guidance and look and feel for the for the core area. We really, you know, we don't have funding for any one of those alternatives. We're not, you know, into that process yet. So it's really up to us and kind of to lay out, I think, some hopefully quick, easy wins, some just very standard things that we want to see across the board. Um, that are going to give us the general look and feel, right? Um, yeah, but I, I I was reading through it and I I couldn't I, I don't want I want to, I don't want to trip on something that we're not doing, and on the other hand I don't know that it's fair to say comply with this because other than setting things back that we have, I don't know that it, it adds very much, and maybe if we could skinny down something more out of this and. and give it more specifics than just throwing that out. It just seems really, really kind of broad. And then the other question was, what are we going to do? Uses require, should or could? Um, whose discretion as to whether or not they do it or not? So it's clear if, if it's well, required in the district, they have yeah, to do it. I, well, that's, I think that, I mean, that's a great question, and that's why we want to go through this language and tell us if it should be a should or a or shall or a should. All right, so then starting on 13, number two, right under stormwater treatment. Yeah. I mean, shall definitely, yes, absolutely. They got to be thinking about rain gardens, landscape features, yeah. permeable pavers, green roofs. Like, yes, absolutely. That's yeah. not a do it if you'd like. No, we, we feel that's a real critical. Uh, totally we're, agree. The, uh, number two. Sorry, on page 13, I think we're under natural environment. Yeah. I think that's the heading. Oh, up top there? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I mean, I definitely think that that that's correctly written with a shall. Yeah. Yeah, and um, so we yeah, as you know, we covered that, but right, and then we we also added uh, under number five, the ingress and egress points. We added the language, no more than one space provided, you know, waivers granted by the planning board. Mm -hmm. So then, we're starting with C and uh, number three, design in the building. So. So right. Uh, is that needed at all? Which which one? Scott? Which one? C. C well, yeah, because that's the that's change just would be three here. This the change under C th is three. Yeah. Why would yeah. we need three at all? Let's see. Well, well it's pointing to the plan where this evolved from. But we don't have any documented history of intent and what the town wants in our bylaws over history like that, right? So this is something no. that a well, hundred years from now people are going to look at and go, what? Well, we, we have it. We have some criteria for the village center. I think we have some criteria for. Yeah, yeah it's this already fits in, in, right in that area. Too. Yeah, that's Those what this. That was. Yeah, that was trying to comp was comparable to. You know, if you remove it, I don't think we lose any control. Well, what if we just remove see this? It, this is the language we're sort of paralleling. Yeah. This is in the village district. We go into roof lines and signage. And, but I think that's where you get, you want to give them some angst, some maybe some of this. Um, but doesn't we, all that we, still apply? No, this is village commercial. Commercial. It, it applies, but it's typically a guideline. So okay. Guidelines we can't. I mean, you did. In fact, you did use it with Cumberland Farms. You referenced that those standards or the guidelines uh, for some of the some of. The, uh, that you is that. some of the rest of this really the guidelines too? I mean, aren't these more or less our guidelines? The, the, the building form, well, the building entrance. But, but the authority for no, the no, because we're because much of it we're saying shall. So we're viewing that as a standard. And, you know. But all that should guidance really would come into play when a site plan is required, and then it's written into what the planning board has in a discussion in a public hearing, right? Right. But it's also coming from the language that you have in front of you in the bylaw that tells you this is a requirement or it's a guideline. So it might be nice to move, like some of like in the village commercial, it says it would be nice to move a building closer to the street. And, you know, you should 
you know, limit to you know your access points, but it doesn't specify it and it doesn't say you have to. But it gives you guidance. It's not as yeah. though it's a, a meaningless thing. In the village plan. No, no, in, in, in the in the bylaws. Oh. In, yeah, but I thought in the bylaws it said a lot. Of... No, in what we've written it does. Oh yeah, that's what I meant. Existing bylaws where like where where. Um, like if you're in this district, you should do this, you should do that, you should do this, but in the end, if they don't want it, they're going to be like, nope. Right. Yeah. So why does it so, need to so be in like, there? For example, here, in, in, uh, this is existing, so this is in site plan review. Design in the village, the village commercial district. Mm -hmm. Development within the village district should preserve and enhance village scale and character. To accomplish this objective, the following design guidelines should should be observed. So keywords well, there should, so, should yeah. guidelines. It, it's it almost has, like that could be a standard document that you could edit on the fly to give to right. someone to say, hey, so to get through, here's your likely we likely We wanted to change. ratchet that stuff up into shells. Gotcha. Yeah, agreed. So it agreed. gives you and us the ability to say, no, you, you've got to put an artistic stormwater system in. Gotcha. I understand it now. Okay. Thank maybe you. we can just spot which ones are coulds and we can make a determination on it. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, we continue to go down because I, I have one that I – should not have put in as a, I feel, no, I should not have put in as a should, and I wanted, I hope you guys will change it to a shout, but um, if we keep the language uh, under three, where we talk about mediation from any such standard shall require a variance for the Zoning Board of Appeals unless a special permit mechanism for deviating from that standard is provided, I'd like to just add, unless a special How permit or waiver mechanism how about a yeah, waiver from the planning board rather than having to go up to the to the ZBA? Um, is there some of these things where it's these are standards as opposed guidelines as opposed to other requirements? Right. Well, do we have a process on a waiver? We well, already have in some cases. Like remember the language you added under the ingress and egress points. So uh, wait, 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 you, let's you wait. added the one. Right, I don't know if it was Alan or you that yeah. added. A waiver is unless the waiver is granted by the planning board. So you do throughout the throughout the bylaw, you do have waivers specified. <coughs> so, like for example, you have waivers for that one, the one that just got adopted, uh, driveway widths. Mm -hmm. That one was just mm -hmm. you were giving that. Yeah, I mean, and I think I, I think. So I would just yeah, say getting a waiver is a lot easier than getting a variance. Got to switch from hard. It's a lot harder getting a variance yeah. than a waiver. And I think if you want to make it more useful, because they'll be for us. Right. And, so I, I would be fine with, uh, unless a special permit because of a deviating thing is provided. So a, unless a special permit or waiver. Yeah, that makes sense. And then, sure. Wait, sure. Warren wanted to add waiver by. Yeah, waiver by the planning board. So you want to use the same language yeah. as the board. Waiver is granted by the planning board, right? Unless a special permit or waiver is granted by the planning board for deviating. Yeah. Do I, do we keep... Well, this so is requiring us. The, the ZBA portion well, that's what I'm trying to figure out what we would ever look at other than the size, other than a setback or a. We don't look like at design. Like a sign? Yeah, that's it. No. Signs? But that, so we're looking at sizes. Yeah. We're not yeah, looking at. Sizes. We don't look at. We don't setback. look at designs yeah, or anything. Yeah, that's what we're we'll talking about design criteria. Let's just keep it in. No. Because there could be a lot size issue. Could it be could a, be a lot. You could have a sign setback. I say that signage, right? Yeah. That signage. would be the other thing, Alan. That would come towards you guys. Sizes. Any deviation of sizes and setbacks. That's a special permit mechanism. I don't even need a special. Yeah, but we wouldn't get the waiver unless it was coming before us in either a site plan or a special yeah. permit. Right. So how would we get them to? How would we able to waive that if it goes just going before you? Well, if it were that, we we can't grant it. We right. can't grant a waiver. So, so that then, would then be, so uh, then unless well, then a waiver, this would be an example where we would have to then bring it to the planning board. Okay, but it's all should stuff anyway. Yeah, no, but no, no, and that's, this is just this is just defining. This is just setting a definition to say shall means this. Shall means do you it. You have to do it. Mm -hmm. It's well, like with your kids. Yeah. So this is under the this is under the assumption that. This Norton Village Center vision plan is written with all shells. No, 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 no. What it's saying is, is these the the uh, the bylaw language where it says shall in the bylaw means you need to do it. It should mean so. Under yeah, isn't all that a given? Yellow? Right? So I don't understand. I mean, isn't that just? 
No, because this is, well, this is just talking about the, we're deviation from such standards. Now, we're not talking about all the bylaw requirements. These are just the standards that are basically enumerated here. Yeah. So we're saying you got to put trees every 30 feet. So you shall do that, but if you want to deviate from that, if it was a shall, yeah. you have to get a waiver to do Understood. that. Understood, okay. Yeah. You don't need a yeah. special permit. Understood. They don't, want, they don't no. care where the trees are going. It's lawyers. No, I meant it's lawyers. Well, I understand yeah. the difference yeah. between the two. I just didn't understand the intent of what See you're doing. See how Warren's all over? He's got it. <laughs> and he's got a dimension. If somebody wanted to do them 20 feet apart, then I could you're see You're basically leaving a waiver for a shall in there. Yes, the waiver's for the shall. Trees? Okay. Anything. Yeah, as long as we didn't, if we, if we, if it wasn't something we could waiver, and oh, they did right. a, 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 a size differential, then maybe it would end but, up yeah, with UL, right? But technically, a zoning change, a zoning variance requires a hardship, and we don't yeah. want to get to that point. Sure. Okay. So, what, but whether or not it, does it have to come back to us either through a special permit or site plan mechanism, by way of waiver or something like that? Because right now, so this is something coming down to us. There are mechanisms where it doesn't. It has to come to us under. Okay, unless this is, this is just saying if you need a deviation from a standard, right. you either go to the ZBA for a variance, or the, the the or the planning board can grant a waiver or a special permit. That's all. Okay. Then again, if we see it and we go, we can't we can't grant a waiver, we can't grant variance. No. Then congratulations. We take it all always. Yeah, you win. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Um, okay. So, anything else on page 13? Yeah, Other and than why I put dot, 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 dot and yeah, those will well, go. No, no, <laughs> that, 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 though, in one, the language that was in the proposed bylaws that you didn't include, uh, I just, it said no building exit shall be located in a manner that impedes autom automobile um, egress from the site. Now that was in their proposed language. We didn't include it. Wait, under A? Under uh, under one, A one. What page? This is thirteen, but that was the language I'm taking out of what was the proposed bylaws that was that was sent to us. Or can you repeat that please? It said no build the language was no no building exit shall be located in a manner that impedes automobile egress from the site. I'm, I'm just reading what they provide, proposed. Okay. Um, take, just take a look at it and see if it. And then on, on was the, that under? That was under the same thing. Under one. Under under one. So it was a built uh, building access. No building exit. Exit. Show. Sorry. Yeah. And again, I just that was there. I don't know where we took it at. In two, you added. Um, Rectangle, rectangular rapid flashing mm -hmm. beacon. Yeah. yeah. What is that? In oh. flashing That's like what's at, at Wheaton. Wheaton. Yeah. Is it a defined term? Yes. yes. Where do we define it? It's an industry standard. Yeah, it's an industry I didn't term. Make that up, I see. Yeah. It. Well, okay, but um, but the, if it's not a defined term in our book, it shouldn't necessarily be capitalized. Oh, so just lowercase it then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, this also had language that I'm not sure if we need or not. None of these standards shall um, be interpreted in any manner as uh, contrary to 521 CMR. That's the Architectural Access Board. I don't know if we need um, it or not. Where, where are you? This is in two. Again, this is language that they had in their, in their bylaw. None of these standards shall be interpreted as in any manner being contrary to 5, 521 CMR. And that is the actual, that's the Architectural Access Board. Again, I just quoted what they have. All walkways have to comply with 521 to make Yeah, I, so, I, yeah. I review that anyway. Yeah. So I, I'm just, I don't care whether it's in or not, I'm just pitching it over there. Okay. Any new building has to comply with the, the ADA. Yeah. So it's redundant yeah. if we put it in. I, I agree. I just, I'm just, yeah. I don't know why they had to put I it in. I don't remember there. why some of these didn't make it in. That, it could have been one of the changes that we made. Yeah, but I, I agree. Yeah. I mean, that, uh, that yeah. applies to everything. So I don't right. know why they had to make it, they had to reference it there. Okay. How about um, page 14? Question on this uh, bicycle parking. Yeah. Um, shall we want to require that they have a minimum three I spaces? We do. Yeah. And that's yeah. Every, everyone? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, that's just a bike rack. Yeah, it's just a bike rack. That's okay. what it's going to end up being. Amazon sells it. 
Okay. Yeah, and I took this from Cambridge or Summerville. Yeah, maybe we know. Yeah. We walk yeah. through Boston, yeah. Trying to promote, you know, we're trying to promote Walkability. walking and biking, so might as well make them put infrastructure in for it. We're going to do some complete streets out here now with bike lanes yeah. as we're going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. This wouldn't, I don't think this chases anyone off. Okay. In fact, no, it shouldn't. I mean, it's pretty standard these yeah. days. Can right. I make a change? Speaking of shall or should, on yeah. number five, outdoor seating, such as dining areas, closets, benches, and seats, I said for this highly encouraged. Then we say that they're required. Shall be visible? And shall be, and shall be visible from the primary frontage. Outdoor seating. Um, Plazas, benches, seats. Shall be required. So something's one of those one uh, of those design yeah, criteria. Like every restaurant. Oh, no. Yeah. And again, that could be a bench. It could be a bench. It could be. A, you know, it doesn't yeah, mean something. it has to be a nice outdoor seating area. That's what we want, though. But there could be a use that comes along where you go. It's not probably going to generate that. But why not still have someone put public seating out there? Okay. I mean, I like that. I think even, you know, for just even a waiting area outside a restaurant, a lot of times there's yeah. benches, I think. Yeah. So Sometimes so, you're going through so another business, so, business and too. Seats. So that's exactly. Or, that's, or what? Or so they can choose. Be, shall, yeah. What, what language do you want to use? Uh, seats are, shall be, shall be required and shall be visible from the primary frontage. Just take shit out and put shall. Yeah. Yeah. And shall be, okay. <clears throat> do you want to remove... Highly encouraged, then? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah, what we'd end up in. Yeah. Thank you for that. I think that's a. I think that's a small but important. That's piece. the whole idea of this, right? Right. So we're going to fill in the XX on the section under lighting, or is that 20? That's 20. Okay. Yeah, it's <laughs> So under, sorry, property. Oh, I thought we were off this page. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, under uh, <laughs> property frontage, number four, street trees, should. Just pointing out you got another should in there. Uh, Do you want that as a shall? Uh, I have no preference. I just was pointing uh, it out. The standard is, 40, is 30 feet uh, in the... Uh, landscaping uh, I was have, just saying do you want it to be yeah. so is, is it redundant? required oh. street trees shall or should be spaced them. so it's another shall then right that should be a shall free catch we're doing a lot of shalls we may not need that should shall language um, <laughs> I mean if we end up ha not having it then I agree you should strike it yeah well, I think it's important where we say, say shall that we still have the language about the yeah. deviation. Yeah, agreed, right? agreed. But I don't, you know, if you don't need, if we don't say should or could, we could eliminate that for yeah. clarity Pretty purposes. Standard code language, yeah. shall and, and may are, you know. Yeah, okay, yeah. optional. Yeah. Yeah, what, what's optional and what's not. It's, so I don't know that you need to define it, but if you feel Because I think that, personally, I think if we're, you know, in a public forum, they're going to be like, okay, well, where do you use that? Like, they, yeah. they'll want to see if we don't use it. Right. I think Orrin, you and I, and Scott, right. you know, on planning board, we've been really trying to think about streamlining those things. Like, if you're not using it, take it out. Because otherwise, the definition we get yeah. all hung up on, and then they'll mm -hmm. be like, well, do you need Stuck it? In the if weeds. you don't, where yeah. do you use it? Where, where, what do you mean when you put it in here? So if it's not, we can just pull it. Now, we don't have, well, you know, in some cases, right, municipalities pick a, lighting design or a sign design or right. something for their historic district or village commercial we're yeah. not there not yet, yet. No. but are we looking for consistency across the core district i mean i, I think that's a great question and that is something we should be that there are certain 
you know, to make a place stand out, in some cases, you have to have consistency. Right, because, right. so. you know, we don't want black lighting here, white lighting here, silver right. lighting here. White pole lights, and you got right. black pole right. lights right next to the historic district, you might see the, the, new right. and the, I, the gas lamps. I'm not saying know. it has to be something high priced. No, I'm but not just like that. as you walk through Wheaton, you have Federalist right. and Georgian and, you know, many different architectural styles that blend and, they blend and, well. and complement each right. other. Yeah. So why limit it? You know. Right. I yeah. Think that's and I part think of the, the. You know, I went to the. You know, this training at um, Serpent, and they were like, "Why get stuck in the weeds?" And I think exactly. Might, you know, I agree with that. I don't want to get stuck in the weeds, but I think at the same time, as long as, you know, as staff and board members were looking for that, because I think sometimes it gets too prescriptive. Chris, I think you're right. Like when someone's like, "You have to have this exact pole from oh, this manufacturer." Crazy. Then you get into the historical light. society situation. Like, they're. Yeah. We're not there yet, but we do want it to have a cohesive look well, and sure, feel to it. Sure. So I, you know, I'm not championing. But these one bigger buildings are going to come under your purview, and right. you're going to look at them and say, yeah, yeah, nay, anyway. Yeah. So I think you'll be able to pick that out at, uh, upon their um, 3D street renderings. Street lighting. Any street lighting. Like. Like required street lighting, like must illuminate. Well, or I'm just thinking of consistent, you know, an area. So if you want conformity, I mean, is that something that you might want to see if you were going to require it, have some conformity? Almost like the street yeah. trees, I think, right, Orin, is kind of yeah. like you're getting yeah. at, like, it your frontage yeah. should have a light every X feet or something, or if we were or looking or for I'm something. Not, I'm just saying, if you're looking for know. conformity, uh, AA might, I guess, instead of the, the architecture itself, it's more like the, you know, the trees, you know, if it was mm. planting the same type of tree or the same type of lighting, if there's, yeah. if there's light, light poles. That, you know, that that will give you that kind of consistency. Because we got a height, we got a height restriction, but not like the separation. So pull, pull back on page 14, uh, oh, number yeah. one at the bottom. Lighting for streets, parking areas, and civic gathering spaces must be decorative in shape. Mm -hmm. Must is okay. Must is just like shell. Is it? Yeah. And yeah, we're, yeah. we're trying to, you know, improve the standards. Okay. Street lighting for streets. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's fine. I'm not proposing any changes, to be honest with you. Just kind of yeah. talking out loud, I think, more than anything. Because I think what you have in here is good. <coughs> Better than what's in here. Oh, yeah. And I, I mean, I think the only thing if is if we did want some type of pedestrian access sidewalk lighting on each parcel along main street would be the only thing if we had if we wanted like a light every x feet or something like that to go along with the the, the to define that pedestrian sidewalk edge um you know we and each owner would obviously be re responsible for that but I don't know if that gets too convoluted. Well, uh, yeah, because then how do you control it? Like, what time process. it comes on? What happens if a light know, bulb goes out? It's more like if yeah, it was like if, if, if it was like the town's lighting and it all went on at the same time. Yeah. See, this is yeah. I'm talking out loud, right? Like, it might not work in that. In Are that street light, the street lights still on that way now? I don't know. That's a good question, Oren. I don't I think so. Chris, do you know there's any street lights along that street? There's no on street there. lights now, right, Chris, down so, there? No, no. If we went under pedestrian circulation, that first one, pedestrian connections that connect the building entrance to a sidewalk or one building to another building shall be designed to be safe, broad, and easily identifiable. What if we also said lit? Lit. Lighted? Like, yeah, is lit. It lighted or lit. Illuminated. 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 Uh, there we go. Avoid, well. <laughs> avoid the trap. Five dollar <laughs> word. But that's not on the street necessarily. Yeah, but that's okay. Yeah, but if we're encouraging people to want to walk in an yep. area, you I want mean, them to feel safe. Yeah. What about the, your issue about the street? No, I'm kind of over that. Okay, I'm kind of over that. Okay. I think because I think, it, can, can I think Oren and Scott make good points. Okay, but we'll add illuminated on mm. site. Yep. Don't worry, 10 years from now, we're going to have like, you're going to buy this light post or this light bulb. Right, it's it's, it's going to get well, crazy. We're gonna, we'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You'll be yeah. the lighting police. You yeah. want them to talk about it. 
Ah, don't, no. <laughs> like, Chris is like, no, don't no, even I'm talk about that. I'm going to hire you and sub that out to you. <laughs> uh. So how about, how about uh, page 15? I'm just curious, in D1, what is it? 14. No, no, no. Are we at 15? 15? We're at 15. <laughs> <laughs> Holding form D1, yeah. what is it we're looking for? Clearly articulate the base, middle, oh. and top. Or I can show you that. Okay. It's something like this. See how they articulate that first level? Okay. How, how it's separate? That's not the same. Oh, so you don't end up with like just this flat okay. wall that okay. goes up four yeah, stories. You're not looking at a box. Got it. Yeah, you're, you know, the, 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 the reason behind that is is you want that first floor matters the most. Oh, yeah, I agree. So, no, I agree. I just wasn't yeah. sure. What was. Should show police here. All right, here we go, oh, Scott. Good. Uh, D2. In new non-residential mixed-use construction ground floors. Should be a minimum. Okay. I don't think we have to say shall be a minimum. I think we want to be. Just pointing out the should. Of course, you have much more of a design. Oh, I'm sorry. I was I was focusing on something else. So go ahead back well, to that one. Are we on uh, D2. D2 on page 14? Uh, 15. 15, thank you. D2. The first line. New non-residential mixed-use construction ground floors. Minimum of 11 feet, should or shall. It's written as should now, I'm just pointing it out. I mean, if they came, if someone came in at 10 feet, does that, it's not a real issue. I mean, how, first of all, what, what would be the minimum they'd have to come in under building codes anyway for, say, a commercial use? For lighting? No, 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 for, height, ceiling. Height of, for ceiling uh, height. Floor, ceiling height. It's minimum like seven, seven four, you know. Yeah, so seven, it's six. Yeah, like somewhere in that range. So uh, yeah, you'd want to keep it, you know, above eight feet. So anything above, you know, between eight and twelve, I think is fine. But building codes would kick in on that anyway. So if we just keep this as a should, that gives us some flexibility. Right, but yeah, you want you want these first floors like twelve feet high because you mm -hmm. want bigger storefronts and, and well, a lot of glass. You want. Are we yeah. putting any cap on the, on the height and does yes. the eleven feet? Dictate how many stories they can have. We have 65 no, feet, right? Four, four stories, 70 feet. Is that what we have? No, no, you don't have 70. No, what do we have? For no, 60. 60. 60. Well, maybe 70 was height of chimneys. Yeah, there's an yes. antenna or something. Yeah, we, had, we yeah. talked about that. Hoopla is. So that doesn't yeah. impact it. No. <laughs> okay. No. Uh, so it's good I mean, as You still have to meet, you can't exceed the maximum height. So. Yeah, I know, but I don't know whether that throws off what are typical you, other, you other you units would be, so that would limit the number of here. units. Um, right. No, because once you get to residential, the heights are... Does it matter if that's a short or short? Yeah. Lower. And, and most buildings, too. It's kind of recommending an 11 foot. Buildings, that first floor is usually the... I, but, yeah, give them the some flexibility. Floor. You know, okay. if they want to get something else in there. So I mean, should, yeah. Put that to shell, no, that's, no, that's fine. fine. No, no, I think that's good. I think good. it's good right where it is. Give them a little flexibility. Yeah. You know, because they might want to do something more elaborate on the second floor, so they might need that extra foot or so. But if they come in at, they're showing you eight feet, there's a little teeth there saying, well, eight feet is Should, limit. right. And then it'll yeah. go back to you guys again, you know? Right. Yeah. And you can go, wait, that's too. Right, it's too small. You, you cram it too much in. Much retail would yeah. Be wanting to go into a space that's that, it almost creates a hidden situation. No, again, so you're getting stuck in the weeds there, so you want to just right. keep it as flexible. Um, yep. Paul, I'm, I'm going to drag you through the weeds for a second. So the lighting on this, should we. Um, usually in in the in the zoning bylaws, it doesn't let you go over one candle foot past the property line. Right. In this village commercial, do we allow that? Yeah, I think we should because it's going to get a little crazy. Close. Especially if we want to illuminate it for people to walk. Uh, so we're going to want that light to. Well, and if we're well, building I, building right up to the property. Yeah. The language that the consultant gave, and the reason why on this, why I went back to the uh, zero point one, which is in the lighting. Just because a lot of these properties have residential, residential. behind them. So yeah, but if we're pointing say? down, if we if the light is illuminated down and not up, and the residential is on the second floor, then it, you know I, I think that some of this could go over the property line on the front side. No, no, this is talking adjoining residential zoning districts, so it's behind us. Just on the residential districts. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, a joint. Yeah, I missed these. Yeah, yeah. But on commercial where should there be able is overlap. Right. Residential right. As long as, zoning as, long as we're district. catching on that. All right. Okay. 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 So yeah. Thank you. I see what you're saying, though, Chris. Core, yeah. Village center core lot. Not a problem. It's, all right. Yeah, because it, it says too that um, uh, 
3 says that it shall be, the all exterior light shall be directed in such a manner as to minimize light trespass onto adjacent properties unless such trespass is intentional and meets the purposes of this district. All right, so you've got to in that. Good. Illumination, blah, That's blah, perfect. Blah, 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 all right. All right, sorry to go back. Yeah, all right. We'll let it, we'll let it go this round. Thanks. I got yeah. the gallery. <laughs> you know, we want to make sure that the properties behind are okay. certainly at first not in adversely impacted and be hopefully actually benefiting from uh, what goes on on the, what goes on on West Main. Okay, 15. Uh, yeah, in, uh, in E1, uh, the, the second, the last sentence says, primary entrances not facing the property should open onto sidewalks or other designated pedestrian areas that are at least 10 feet wide. Do we want to leave should? Or could they open up into a parking lot? Or, or should that be a shout? Hmm. Nice. Should shout police again, huh? Yeah. Give them the design flexibility with the yeah. should. Okay. I think you should because as long the, as ten, it's the safe. 10 foot width is, is pretty large yep. and yeah. when it comes to sidewalk widths. You know, that, that's They might want to shoot generous. it on into it out. Yeah, yeah. So I think okay. if we give them a little bit of flexibility there, that's good, especially yeah. if we're looking for some density. We don't want them to have to take, let's say, two feet right. just for sidewalk width, depending on, you know, where they're going with it. So I think that's okay. I mean, to give it to give a, a reference, I'm putting 12 foot sidewalks in for a bus stop, but that's an active loading and unloading zo zone. That's huge. 10 feet for just maybe yeah. access to a small residential area is also quite large. Yeah. So. Sometimes though, when you have a, you know, a larger office building. Yeah, you, you might that want that. At the yeah. Yeah, you got. Only get bigger. Yeah. 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 The minute it narrows out. You've got a lot of shoulds in your in your signage. Is that in? Is that okay with and then, and for the signage, Roy Paul, this is in in addition to yeah, in addition to the to requirements the under section. Okay. So it's that plus this. Right. Okay. Right. Just making sure I'm so reading that right. And, and like for the first one, wall mounted or, or projected signs should be located above the ground floor. I guess just to give them some flexibility. Well, if we we're going to change anyone, I change the second one. It shall not obstruct architectural features or windows. But, I mean, I think generally they wouldn't do uh, that anyways, two. or they're not going to invest in those things. The second line, she's up. I'm sorry. Uh, the sec no, she's the second, second sentence second in number one. Yeah. Signs shall, shall not obscure. Yeah. Okay. But, I mean, you know, but, depending on where you're standing from, Julie, on the street true. and what angle, yeah. You know, that's that's uh, ambiguous, so I, I, th I think you got to give them some flexibility. Yeah, that's so. fine. Okay, so yep. should. Should is good. It should is. You're good. right, Chris. It depends on, are you looking at it from the front, right. from the yeah. side? Yes. Are you driving by it? No matter where you put it, that sign, it's going to block something it. off. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yep. And again, these will evolve over time. And, you know, when you start dealing with colors and whatnot. It, yeah. It's subjective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Retailers don't like you dictating what the colors of their signs are. They go poopy. No. <laughs> number three on the next page is that sign materials should be high quality. Um, Qual Quality's. Uh, I know, that's yeah. a hard one, right? Yeah. Like, how do we determine yeah. the quality of the sign? Right. I'm not saying you don't want, like, pieces of pallets hammered to the wall. <laughs> Well, it's artistic. Piece of paper. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> that might look, that might look <laughs> awesome. High quality. Shop That's a nice pile. That's what made out of oak. You know, you know. come on. <laughs> and, uh, plastic uh, prohibited. Okay. So we're basically looking for um, monument signs, low signs. Is that what this right. is? Okay. Just trying to get you know, smaller signs. That what about EMS boards? Are you going to take those out too? To that you address that because by special permit, if they're allowed in uh, the other zones, but are we going to allow it here? Uh, are you going to take it out? It's special board? permit, I think. It's I think special it's permit. Special yeah. permit. I mean, I think that's the whole idea of taking that out of this, though, right? Um, Do you want to eliminate that from here? I think, I think we did now. Well, maybe we should rethink that. Sorry to go back. We did. We did put special yeah, permit. It's going way back. Yeah. Now. 
right. <laughs> there. That's one, Chris. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. They're special. Going back. I'm trying to find it now. Um, it's in the news table, isn't it? Not EMC's electronic message center. It's on page six. We do have it as a special. That could be anything that changes then. Anything a moving sign. I think it's defined as anything that moves at within eight or ten seconds or something like that. But don't. It, I, no. Flashing. Yeah. 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 Mm. A special permit. Yep. Yeah, so let them yeah. beat it up at the special permit hearing. Yeah. I guess so. All right, makes sense. Yep. Wait, you want to do what? <laughs> yeah. Do it the old-fashioned way. Just paint that sign up. I've got a couple of Norwood there, 18 feet tall by 22 yeah. feet long. So. Really? Yeah. They, they do exist. So anything else on signs before we get to parking? I guess even up should be high quality. You could certainly be asking them what material are you using. Mm -hmm. and I think it, it, it still should gives be. you an opportunity. Right, you don't want to get crazy like, I mean, there's, there's signs in some cities, you know, like historic cities like Innsbruck and Salzburg. When they get absolutely insane with their requirements. Everything has to be the same lettering, same font, you bet, same, same color. Height. Yeah. So yeah, the yeah, famous yeah. McDonald's yeah. sign that was the most famous. Their town font. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. I'm uh, working in a, in a community that's dictating what the crosswalks look like in, in certain districts, like with special like Pavers layouts. And, and, yep. Yeah, I mean, Cobble, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really it's yeah. incredible. It's stuck in the weeds. Yeah. Well, in some cases, it makes a difference to that. But again, this yeah. will evolve over time. Yeah. 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 We don't have that problem here. You know, you were asking earlier about consistency. <laughs> I know, I know. That's why I let it go. <laughs> we don't have any consistency and we don't have too many, uh, you know, we have the, the historic society, we have the uh, monument park, and then we have good uses and good businesses, but the buildings they're in. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, standardizing on the VCC alone is a big step, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Th this alone is huge. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. So anything else on signs before you tackle parking? <clears throat> oh boy. All right. So I think wow. the parking, the parking, parking right, Oren is okay. like, do, yeah. does this really have teeth, right? Is that kind of what you're getting at? Because well, well, you feel like it's kind of yeah, just yeah, documentation? Be before I even get to that, there's okay. just some structural things that I suggest. Right now it says site plan review applications. Yeah. I'd say N applications under 11.3C, which go to you. Because right now, a site plan, you don't have a, that's not a site plan review going to you guys. So it should be a site plan application okay. and applications under. And the other thing, I also say. Uh, wait, uh, is uh, it 11? 15, 15 point. Let me just get that. 13, point is it 11.3C? Is it? 15. 15? 15.3C5. C5. That's the one that, okay. that they don't meet the threshold. Well, okay. no, was there another one? There's another one where it goes to you. Uh, if it's not a new construction, do you need this as well? It's the waiver one, right? No, there was a there's a there's an earlier one, in the 11.3. Oh, that's if that's if they're making like ADA improvements. So this wouldn't apply there because any change of use. Any change of parking doesn't require. The, the, any, remember the, now, any, any change, change of parking, parking right? You, got it. You know, okay. There's no flexibility. And then, there. then also, should it also apply for special permits? So if they're applying for a special permit, should we also get well? Uh, I, I want to be able to get the, re the parking report for a special, re let me see, uh, site review applications. Yeah, I, I, as part of a site plan, a special permit, they ought to be providing, this doesn't fall into that. Well, well we can require They have to do a special permit, they're gonna to have to come in with a site plan anyway, so uh, I, don't, I think you're covered. Well, well not necessarily. So those, are, there are things that are requiring a special permit, would they all be, would they all, under our definition, call, call for a site plan review. Yeah, how else would you review a building without the site plan? I, I know, but does it qualify for a site plan review? We can get a special permit without giving a site plan review. And I don't know, maybe we ought to put that in as one of the things for site plan review, if a special permit's required? Um, 
So, okay, so that's a good question. So if we look back at the use table, so anything over 10,000 square feet triggers both the site plan and the special permit. Yeah, but there's, uh, there's uses that are better for yeah, the special so, permit. Yeah, okay, no, that's a good use point. The special so if permit. we had a nonprofit, let's say we had a health club. So if that's a health, that's a good, okay, so if, they, if it triggers, if it triggers a special... So maybe... I'm sorry, it's not my fingers. But no, no, it's good. You're having an idea. That's not yeah. a bad thing. Waiter. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yet. But what if, if we talk about... If we go back to page 12, uh, uh, under C, or, and any, any use that triggers a special permit will require a site plan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, good. I like that. That was a good snap. They oh, see... Right. Paul, there you go. What was that snap two hours ago? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Any use that uh, requires a special permit? <clears throat> yeah, because that, that's, that's a good point. Because if we don't want a situation, if you get a special permit, you need the site plan. Yeah. There's no question. So we'll we'll add that we'll add that to five. We'll make that number five, and then this becomes six. So then I need to change that last site to make sure that's for the parking report. That would be then uh, application number fifteen point three C six. So I'd write that as any use that requires a special permit. Trigger a site plan. Yep. Good. That's good. Yeah. <clears throat> um, the 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 draft provided by the report also suggested for parking to at least require some minimum parking for residential. I don't know if you want to deal with that or not. Well, we did. We did say. I think we did say any any you know, any yeah. new. Well, yeah, we did say that. any new. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Any new. Any new or expanded use would require yeah. a special yeah. permit. So, and the okay. parking study would have to factor in residential. That would be a requirement. Yeah, but there, and I think they just said you should have minimum requirements for residential. So it's one for two, or two for, for each bedroom, or something like that. Yeah, this just made me think of something going to the, the, the issues that we're talking about for this report. Uh, I think one of the concerns I would have with the use, like with the top of the shop use, with our current code, would be applying what standard because we could be talking about multiple uses in one building mm -hmm. and I don't know our code so if you look at the ITE they they sh I believe they they do capture mixed use buildings of some sort of mixed use development yeah I, I don't know how they I don't know how I mean I think Oren's question of seeing yeah. like an example would be helpful yeah I'll, so that I'll we could take I'll a get just take like a look at that although right. I do agree with you I mean it costs like five hundred dollars to get that thing um, it, yeah. it would be good so yeah, I'll, I'll see what so I can, can find. Talk to one of our peer reviewers and ask them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Agreed, agreed Oren. Yeah. So I think it would be good just for us to take a look. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like the fact that it is, it is, it's an industry standard. You know, anybody who comes forward should, should be well versed in that, yeah. hopefully. It is up to date. You know, they've got multiple editions yeah. going. It should have a much more, hopefully, flushed out use. Then, well, then, many, many yeah. Mm. Then what we have now, which is hard, because we are trying to figure out, like, okay, what, what, what one's close Cause, enough? Because this would, like, if you were thinking about trip generation, I know we're talking about parking, but if you had top of the shop, if you if you looked at our code and you said, okay, you're going to have to generate traffic for your residential and your commercial, but wait a minute, people will shop, people will go down to. The store that's underneath, and you typically would get like ITE would give you a credit for that because right. there's an assumption in that. So anyway, but I'll I'll pull it up, and and this is just what we think is the best practice. Um, if the board feels like they'd rather go a different route, then then we go a different route. It's your code, <laughs> so so okay. So parking. So we'll make that change. That uh, site plan review applications and applications that fall under under threshold there. What else? Uh, the, just so, yeah, um, I, <clears throat> I understand which we, we, we want to talk about um, off-site parking in different lots, 
Um, and then about looking for parking agreements. So I'm building a building, I've got a use, I've got a parking agreement. What happens once that parking agreement expires, if I have one? No, Do we deal with that? So that's a great question. So we would need to ensure, we need to look at the length of the, the contract. Yeah, we have to look at the agreement. Yeah. But it, have to, it, and that's a submittal requirement. So they need to show uh, that, that they had that, but then there would have to be some mechanism in the, say, in the site plan <coughs> application to say what happens if that agreement goes away. Yeah, that's right. A, I mean, that's the thing that bothers me is there's no real other alternatives. So if they limit the number of spaces they have, let's say I've got no spaces, but I'm going to use the space next door to me, and they have no spaces at all, there's really no, no, no other alternatives for them. And that's, that I think that goes, back to, that goes back to us about <clears throat> letting somebody build a building, and they, they, they buy a building, and they, they're leasing it, and all of a sudden that lease gets terminated. The landlord doesn't pay the rent, and they terminate that lease, and they can't park there anymore. I mean, that's, you know, you, you're going to get... Yeah. This because there's really no other alternatives. The other thing that bothers me also right. is yeah. unless, you know, again, you've got a difficult traffic situation. So if you get people that they have, okay, I've got the right to park next door, and they come there and they have to find a sign, and they're, they're trying to find that parking lot, and they're coming. It's, 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 I'm concerned that we've got a bad situation there now, and how, how, we, how we deal with that. Uh, the, que the other question I had is, does yeah. the town have any place that they could allocate for some parking um, anywhere along yeah. that way? Uh, whether we charge the people to use it, whether we have it as a backup, or we have some other way of accommodating it. And the other thing is crossing over that street, whether or not, if you're really making this a village commercial, yeah. um, where do they cross? Do they have to go down to the corner? Or the yeah, it's going to be within 800 feet, right? Yeah. That's a, you know, that's a... So on that last point, I, you know, obviously this doesn't address it, but you know, we have one of the things I want to start initiating is in this town is to get district what they call district improvement financing, which um, um, it's a revenue source for us where as property values start to go up, we can actually funnel or not funnel, but invest the money. Where, anyway, I won't bore you with that, but that's a funding tool that I'm thinking. It would, this would be a great area for us to have a, a district improvement fund to invest in infrastructure improvements. And one of the big things I think is crossing. <coughs> I agree. We need we need lighted crosswalks there. And you know, it, I, I think going forward, that's something we need to do is try to find a, a funding source, whether it's a district improvement financing, whether it's getting a grant through MassWorks. But um, I think we need to look at this area and go, how do we get people to cross it? That's a huge issue. And then, but it's complicated with the traffic, too. Yeah, I agree. Well, so well it's yeah, that's, I mean, it, the traffic, and, and, and when there's not traffic, it's complicated a whole lot by the speed. Yeah, yeah the speed. So right, and, exactly. Uh, and the lighting. So um, I would you know, like to talk more about the, the capital side of this area in addition to this, but how could we fund sidewalk improvements? You know, then would be the time to talk about lighting. When could I we agree. put more yep. lights if yep. we have the funding sources yeah. to do it? Um, I think to go back to the parking, you know, to yeah. kind of play off Oren's point is so, you know, typical, like, so even like where we are now, like the daycare <laughs> doesn't run on weekends, but the commercial buildings on either side. Right, and the bank closes at right. four, and exactly. then the bars open at six. Exactly. So, yeah. so those are great opportunities, right, for shared parking. But Orrin's right; that's only going to work as long as an agreement yeah. is in place, and then. Is well, then you have places that won't put an agreement in place, but you still know that. I know, but then you have there. like a. So yeah, you yeah. can still yeah. count them. It thing. is really a hard thing because you don't want to. You don't want to squeeze a, a you, business out of business if they're look at all the existing changes. communities. Right, yeah. And you don't want everybody using the CBS parking lot. Right. No, but you look because at dense commercial yeah. centers and, and you look at how, you know, areas that have been in existence for over 100 years or so, they don't have these agreements, but it still works. Yeah. And the, and the delivery trucks are still coming in early in the morning and dropping the, the it off. Delivery, and, the and loading, it loading and delivery, ha that, that you can work around. Yeah. But, but the parking, you really can't. And uh, most of those have on-street parking or some parking yeah. somewhere. And so 
That, that's what scares no, you, me in you, terms of... I would say there are some remote spaces, like Wheaton has remote parking over here, and then, yeah. you know... We have the 10 parking spaces near, right next, 10, 10 or so parking 15. spaces right next to the park. Is but I think we're in the beginning. Isn't he behind the senior center? Is there any land behind the senior there center? Is. There is. The water department's there, right? Well, yeah. But uh, land we own? Uh, it's school, and the school has the, uh, the building near the shed, and then there's actually land out back there where the water tower is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, th there's those are things I think... Ultimately, the, yeah. you know, the time they want to look, I mean, they, they could charge people for it and they can get some revenue for it, but that's a way of really providing. Again, something. this will evolve over time. Yeah. We'll have to add yeah. something. Yeah. So, yeah. You put in it might not be here right now but to entice people in, but as it progresses, yeah, it will need to be addressed and then that will be changed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess you know if there was, there was something available. Yeah. That was more yeah. important. That, that's there, a good is, there is some lots that are owned by the town, small, yeah. that, you know, uh, too small to, to fit in anywhere else that, that will work into that. Actually, Orrin, that's a great spot, too, because that park is just, like, wedged in a very awkward place. So if the, de the, if the commercial core were to start where it is and start to grow out there, mm -hmm. you, could put a mun you could tuck a municipal lot, make that park more visible to people who are both on the street and off the street in the surrounding area, because it really is kind of wedged in right next to CVS. So I think yeah. as it grows, I think that's a great point. I think that you could mm -hmm. kind of capitalize hopefully on some of that land I that's think putting something that like this with knowing that there's a future possibility yeah. of growth I don't yeah do it now and the senior but center isn't going to be there forever right yeah, yeah. so it, something like that would really be able to enhance yeah. that that development and look we can look right. to the in fact remember uh you know one thing to keep in mind um if we see bob Iron's proposal to expand and you know they want to take that property behind the parking certainly could be worth the discussion that would they would they do some contracting. I mean, I, I don't know that you can make a requirement of that in the permit, but I think in the beginning, in the near future, we're going to be dealing with parking on site, is my, is my guess, because we have no on-street parking. And, uh, but a lot of places now are moving to kiosk parking, so like they'll have yeah. a lot, they set the time that, hey, if it's between this time, you need to pay at the kiosk, and then they just yeah. have someone build those people if they don't. So yeah. like, Bog Iron could easily do that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to, you know, I just use them as an example. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But I do think, in the, you know, until other things occur, it's probably going to be the onus is to find it on site. And, and something, you know, there are liability issues, too. I mean, there, there may be reasons why businesses don't want, or, you know, property owners don't want other people parking. No, retailers don't. Yeah. They, they yeah. don't want to do that. Yeah, they, right. they, yeah. Can, yeah. they can afford not to, they don't do it. Yeah. If you had a slip and fall in your parking lot, right. it's, yeah, on, exactly. your it's yeah. on your customer. Right. It's, your, it's on your right. liability insurance, not right. anybody else's. Right. So I, I, I don't know that there are too many examples. I know that there, there are. Obviously, you have people who valet park, and obviously they're using somebody else's parking lot. So. Yeah, but you're talking about high-end stores when you're talking about valet parking. I mean, you really... Or like a restaurant. Maybe a restaurant. There are restaurants that aren't, aren't high-end, but they don't have parking. Providence is full of them because yeah. mm -hmm. if you awesome go to full, Federal right? Hill or uh, Federal Hill is the best example. Where do they put them? You like know. church parking lots, like they keep driving. Yeah, it still works. Yeah, yeah. they make it Places work. Places are still busy. Yeah, it's, it happens. It's, it's booming. Yeah. Booming. Yeah. Yeah. booming. Yeah. Uh, but you know they'll have to figure that out. But they're going to have to justify it. And you know in terms of the length of that contract, then then what happens if they lose it? So again, excuse myself. I'm sorry. I got to go. See you tomorrow. Absolutely. Have a good night. Take care. Have a good Chris. Thanks, right. Chris. Um, so you know, I would say we, we really need to be looking at on-site parking. <clears throat> but that may be a way of poking someone to go, why don't you talk to your neighbors? Mm -hmm. and, see. and if they do, I can come back and say, if they're not interested, then... then well, and I think the one driveway is going to help with that, too, and, and yeah, create that, some of those conversations, which I think is good. Yeah. You know, with the thinking of, you know, limiting curb cuts along that, that stretch, so... Yeah, the, the common driveways are they're a way. That's a way of really dealing with yeah. it. You'll get you'll get they're more comfortable dealing with that than trying to do offsite somewhere else. Yep. You know, and, yep. And then they'll, they'll. And I was reading in one of the 
the community that's doing something like this where they were using they were using infra, uh, funding to help pay for some of these connections. It's possible, but you know, again, we're not anywhere in the ballpark of getting something like that yet. But it's on the radar. Let's get this done first, and then. Is uh, it too restrictive to say? Parking agreements have to be renewed annually, and like it's something you have to renew when you do a when you go in front of the board of selectmen for your license. Is it tied to a license somehow? If you're saying you can do it 800 feet away, and like Warren was saying, it, it, you lose your agreement. Well, I don't know. It kind of becomes a business risk, though, right? You lose your parking, you go out of business. So. Yeah, it's hard for us to approve a building that doesn't that's not going to be in compliance. So they lose it, and somebody buys a building, and um, something happens, and all of a sudden they've got yeah. a non-conforming building that they can't do anything with. And that that's then they sort of say, why'd you let the other owner do that or something like that? Right. Um, well, so here's the thing is we wrote it as a shall. What happens if they have some unwritten agreement? Well, I, if they're coming in for a site plan and special permit, I, I would just advise that. And I realize this stuff happens. Yeah. If we get to this point, it's a good I problem. wouldn't accept that as a, we're, don't worry, we get Okay, we all are. right, fair. I mean, it's, it's, it's your call or a future planning do, board's Do we call. need something about saying somebody's got to accept what's proposing? You, you say availability, feasibility, ability, off-street parking is this under, it has to be safe. Signed we, agreement. Yeah, does somebody have to, or, do you guys have to approve what, you know, they're giving you a parking plan, a parking report. They're going to be giving it to you. No, they're giving it to you too. Right. They're giving it to yeah. They would give so, it to however they're submitting it. But right, but somebody, but what all this says is there's a parking report. It yeah. says you don't have to do comply with seven, but what do you have to comply with? Do you have to set? It has to be sub. Whose discretion to say that that's okay? Oh, what's the decision making? Yeah, like we yeah. need like okay. a conclusion paragraph, so Paul. Say, what would we say here then? You um, need like a conclusion paragraph. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how would you all want to say that so that it would a number eight, if you will? Yeah, or like after a number eight, like oh, there's a number. Eight. Put it in G. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Like the parking report shall be reviewed and approved by something like that, Oren. Well, it's not just, you're not approving the report. You're approving what they're going to actually do based on the report. Re yeah. Approving the report recommendations. <coughs> well, the, the report can make recommend. They could be. They're going to submit a report that says, "I, you know, this is what is needed." This is my proposal. And, and they're, and they're going to propose something which may be better than that or less than that. Whatever it is, someone's got to sign off and say we're okay with the parking. And I, I, how how that get, gets done? This is just saying I got yeah. to give you a report. And this is what the report says, and somebody's going to say that's sufficient. So it has to be accept their their proposal. Uh, I mean, based upon that information, it's still subject to somebody saying. We accept we, that's sufficient. Um, How about if you put it in G and you put it in the last line there and say approval shall be granted by blah, 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 and shall include, and then you go into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In the opening paragraph? In the opening paragraph, yeah. So the last sentence right now says the parking report shall include. Just say. It's not subject to the requirements of an but, but it's subject approval to approval. But it's subject to approval by the reviewing by the reviewing parties. By the reviewing body, yeah. Yeah, written approval required by the reviewing body and the report shall include. Something like that. Yeah. Okay, so is subject to uh, subject to approval by the reviewing body. Governing body by reviewing the governing body. body. And the re parking report shall include. <coughs> so then, uh, okay, so by the governing body and the parking report shall include. No, just say the parking. And then, yeah. No, just say the parking report shall include. Okay. So not subject to off street parking requirements, but, but subject. Um, site plan applications are not subject to. Okay. Okay, hold on, read the sentence. The site, site plan applications are not subject to. I didn't to even read D. Yeah, yeah. Shelby, a binding parking report. That's just. Yeah, a binding parking report. Shelby, yeah. Hold on. Just a second. Um, you know, looking here at. Um, Section 15.8, which is decision uh, in the bylaws, the, 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 the board shall approve an application based on 
Congress to deal with the projected development impacts of the proposed methods of mitigating such impacts upon finding that the proposed development is in conformance with this bylaw. The Planning Board may impose conditions on a site plan which, although the proper form it takes a use or structure that fails to comply with the objective required by this bylaw plan in the opinion of the Planning Board, such conditions will render the site plan in compliance with its objectives of the bylaw. So I think when you, anything going to, to the board, not only the language you have here, but you also have 15.8, which tells you, you give the authority, you give the approval on the site plans. And it's based on your review of the projected development impacts, parking's a development impact. So I think with the language you're adding here and then the language that's already here, you should be covered. Well, except you say it's not subject to off-street parking requirements under the seven. So by saying that, I don't know that you, you're taking, I just want to make sure That's that it's 15 he's reading, right? 15, 3, 15, 8? I just read 15, 8. Which is? Uh, the decision. Back in the site the plan. decision. It's the site plan uh, section, and this is the decision authority that you have. And I was looking at uh, yeah. under A, number 1. So that's just standard language. So. Well, that's just the decision, locations and type of uh, requirements, and requirements. Yeah, I think you still need because you've you know, you've negated seven by neg negating seven requirements. There's it's, it doesn't have any requirements at all, so now it still needs to be Why? seven. You well, just negated it. You just said off street parking requirements under seven don't apply. How about if we said are not applied but are replaced by this parking report, something like that? The re the report you don't want to be stuck with it. the report. Will just make will say these are some guidelines. But they may be less, they may be more. Well, the, well, the report is saying that the report, all the report is doing is saying, here's what we project the, tra uh, the parking impacts to be, and here's how we're proposing to do it. Right. It's just a different way of looking at what's in sec is seven now. It's just a different standard. So and it's asking for a bit more than what seven. But, but you're, you're, you're still, someone has to approve it, but it's based upon what they, you look at the, the report. Okay, the report I, is. So I added the language, I did add the language that said that uh, they're not subject to off-street parking requirements in seven. My reason, my reason for it was I thought that would be confusing if we didn't put it in there, that, okay, which one is it? Am I doing a parking report or am I doing the parking under seven? So are you saying by, by knocking out seven that you're concerned that it's taking away your review on parking? Is that... I'm saying this This is what you review. It doesn't say that you make a determination that this is sufficient. So you have to, they're going to give you what they think is needed, and but somebody's got to say that that's sufficient. And it doesn't have to be what was in seven. And I don't know whether you want to say seven, but if it's subject, it could be changed based upon the report, or take out seven altogether, and then making sure that it's subject to the approval of whatever right, the so off-street parking is but, subject to approval. It is subject to approval by the government. Right. Uh, I just want to make sure it's clear that they should be doing in this area, looking at this study, this report, rather than because I'm just concerned that down the road people might go, wait, we have parking standards in seven, so what mm -hmm. could we say supersedes the parking standards of? Well, you says it's not subject to the off-street parking requirements of seven. What I'm saying is rather than say not subject to. That these this that this report supersedes. The, the report is it only the off street portion the, the, of it? The report can't do it because the report's gonna say something, but you're gonna have to, you're gonna have the discretion to say it's gonna say only need three parking spaces, but you need the right to say, no, you really need four here. Or you because you right. know you're not gonna Yeah, so we we added that language, right? Yeah. About 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 the, the approval. Yeah. No, no. As long as you're adding the subject to the approval, that's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay. Well, yeah. Is seven limited to? I'm not sure. Seven limited. Should say, to. yeah. Should it say then that the parking report shall be reviewed and approved by the governing body, and include? Well, oh, review. You can say it should be accepted. In other words, if they give you a parking report that's in the back of an envelope and not by somebody that you really you have any credence in, you don't have to accept that report. It has to be a, a report acceptable. To, Who's well, giving you don't approve it then, right? Right. You have to, yeah. So, yeah, right. You have to yeah, I, I just wanted the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Back and forth. Yeah. 
Uh, but also, wait a minute, seven has standards. We'll so you maybe want to just, we've got to be careful of what we're not approving. Because seven here includes uh, design standards, the size, of the, the size of the spaces. Well, I just said off-street parking requirements. Okay. So mm -hmm. is it like Article 7 in a certain section? It's then, seven. Paul? Is that uh, non residential um, parking requirements? Is seven? There are six. Maybe that's it. We might want to look at that if Orrin's okay. right and we don't want to take out the I'll size seven. requirements. Uh, Maybe we don't want to take all of seven out, just certain sections of seven. We could say yeah. 7.6, which is non residential parking and loading requirements. Because we certainly don't want them to give us then, like, yeah. You know, all compact car spaces, and we're like, oh, geez. Uh, I think it's simple. We could just say, um, yeah, so nine, I would just say 7.6. Right. 7.6. Right? So that's parking cool. standards. Yeah, let's add, let's add that in. Because okay. that even yeah. specifies it more. Parking requirements of Article 7, uh, 7.6. Good. Okay. Perfect. Great. I and mean, this is this is exactly what how these processes should. Hey, work. listen. If we do too good of a job, guys, we're going to be like in permanent business. You're going to have a formal meeting to do this again. So, the the only thing you mentioned with, uh, with to Renee on the the um, marijuana zoning bylaw, are we going to make an effort to do that? Or get back to her on it or not? Or we we met we'll today. We didn't it. talk about it. But I didn't I have a chance to look at it. I don't know if anybody else. Did. I think you guys would offer a lot on it, and I think I would. Well, I would wrap my just thinking about things like this. You guys get a shot at it beforehand. I think it'll make it a smoother process. Is that going in front from the industrial commission? It's been going. Yeah, it's but like, I mean, they're going to present it at the at town meeting. We talked about that a little bit. It. Yeah, I, I think that's the plan. Yeah. That they would. <laughs> So it's in parallel to this then, right? Yeah, it, they are. Different. In fact, we're going to try to do some things together. Uh, we talked about some of the do the elder we're doing yeah. for mm -hmm. this. We would probably merge it. Do it the Is there time. time for us to put some input into this, to what they're doing? That's what I'm hoping. I mean, I, I, I would mind. I just wanted to look through it. There's, There's a it, lot. Does, it needs some help. It does, I mean, yeah, it does need some help. And it's I'm not a lot. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, Again, I think I, I and I have to say after tonight and last or last week, I mean this was I felt like this was incredibly helpful. This is a much better document and uh, Yeah, and trying to go through that with the full committee is just not just not something you yeah, can really get through. I think we could just be a little more informal and mm -hmm. you know, just I don't know. You don't have the time either. I mean, no, you don't no, have the time. No. The seven hours just, that we just spent doing you know, it. Yeah, you're gonna have well, next your next one you're gonna have Wading River and you're gonna have Farms and this, we did push. The, yeah, the, I really think we have to be mindful of that. I'm not. I'm not saying that because I want people to feel like they're not getting on the first meeting. But I do think we need to be really mindful as we come up with yeah. what will be on the warrant, what we want to tackle as a committee to to just be mindful of that. And sometimes we might have to be like, well, I'm sorry, you're going to have to wait two weeks if, if our agenda is just yeah, too full. Yeah, because it's just it's backing up. And, yeah, um, not backing up, but it's getting old. Yeah, uh, but we've gone over. Um, you know, some of the, the plans that we have for this and including when we anticipate taking this back to the board in April for the board to issue its recommendation for town meeting. So do we want to go to our board before that? What yeah, uh, again, the there end product will be I want to put this on that agenda next week. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. Is there anything else that the board that we know of for town meeting will be reviewed? the marijuana we don't know yet because the uh, are we putting an accessory use in just separately but who's put we could bring it back i wasn't Good. anticipating it but if you want me to we can bring it but then back. again how much do you want to do yeah i know well, i was just gonna say what are we bringing in front of the town meeting just anything to do with zone. just this right just now, right? this and then if if we do that if one. we did accessory use that would might be the only other thing right yeah. i mean marijuana but will come through us that's from the big the, one though right you're technically yeah. present yeah. No, I think, well, that's, we talked about that at our board meeting. Yeah, like, who is going to actually be the one who stands up and says, you know, we brought this article forth. I think it'll end up being the IDC. The, the IDC, not us, but it will come 
through us for recommendation and then forward, right. you know. Um, yeah, that or, that or we had said that if, if it was as written, we would do it, they would speak to it. Yeah, I think we kind of are still figuring yeah. that out. And they've taken, they've taken a long, you know, a lot of, of initiative into it. I would, you know, I don't want to speak for them, but I would think they would be the appropriate ones. They mm. really I, I think so. I mean, they've, it. they've done way more research. But and This is a big, yeah. Um, but I, I just, you know, for anything that the town is initiating, we want to make sure it's done in the best way possible. Mm -hmm. And I think that like, this is showing a really good way to, you know, take some fairly complicated you know, topic and, and work it through, get it refined. And then, you know, one question I wanted to, when we went, if we're done with this, I wanted to find out next when we put it on the agenda next week, uh, do you all want to, does someone want to take the lead on, on this? I think it's more effective coming from, from one of you than it does from me. Um, you know, I just want to see what would be the best way to get the best, like a, the conversation we've had here. Yeah. Talk about yeah, how it we would, ended up getting here. And, it would be good to have a summary of these were the pieces of it that were under discussion, what the changes were, just to give yeah. them the high level, how it morphed. Yeah. And then they'll f at least understand some of the discussion, not dig as deep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think we could definitely give a, you know, an overarching summary of the conversation. Yeah. And I mean, I do agree with you, Paul. I think this has been extremely fruitful. I, I, you know, in hindsight, I really wish we had had time to digest a lot of what went to last town meeting in a forum right. like this or with other people who were impacted by some of the proposed changes because yeah. it does give us a lot of time to just talk through an issue and really mm -hmm. get comfortable with it and, and, you know, be able to have like a very fruitful and good dialogue around it. Um, and obviously having Chris and you be a part of that is, is very beneficial to yeah. us. So, um, I think Chris does a really good job too when we do an outreach and things like that. Like when he did with Reed and Botten, the, yeah. the PowerPoint he did with yeah. that and explaining things like that. Yeah. I think he does a really good job. He does. He does. Yeah. Not to volunteer him for more. He's gonna watch this and be like, "Oh, Alan, I got you." <laughs> oh, is there anything else on the parking? No, I think we're. I think we're okay. good. Do we? I, I assume then, with the, the threshold of ten parking spaces, you just want the board to deal. Yeah, with we'll that. leave okay. that and I leave think, that I highlighted. Think, I think the thing to highlight for the my sense for the board is. is Understanding the, the, the trade off of the type of work you and Chris will do mm -hmm. as opposed to when it comes to us. Yeah. What triggers? And, yeah. yeah. And then, and then, the, the, then the parking issue is a big one. I think the rest of the stuff I think they've seen yeah. before. I don't know. And maybe going through the schedule, maybe they may have some questions on what we've done and why we've done yeah. it on the I'll schedule. Have, I'll bring the schedule forward. I need to talk to Steve about that. We had talked about it uh, preliminarily, but I need to get with him and just see this is. You know, I'd really like to get this item after after you all transmit it. Then when it comes back for the public hearing portion of it for for referral to the town meeting, that, are you okay with for the two meetings in April? We still have May fifth open, but um, my preference would be if we can move it sooner. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. That gives you yes. a third night if you need it. Sooner but, the better. But Absolutely. I, and I, my Steve and I had talked about for those meetings where we're talking about any zoning bylaw changes. And we won't know until February 12th, who else comes up with something. Right. Mm -hmm. That those nights are set aside for the zoning bylaw and mm -hmm. nothing else. I right. totally agree with I mean, that. We saw yeah. what happened in October. With, I mean, we had yeah. all that yeah. stuff going on. And you guys did a great job getting through all of it. But that was, that was too much. Yeah. We need to just say, you know, we're going to have at least one meeting where it's selling but I mean, you imagine between this and marijuana, what your meeting's going to be like? Mm -hmm. It's going to be a lot. I mean, if we can, I'm hopeful that the work you all have done, that the other members are going to go, okay, you guys are okay with it. We have, might have a few things, but then we're good with it. And One thing that, that I was going to suggest, and I, I'm sorry for not raising it before, when you have the discretionary stuff going back to you and, and the building inspector, I would suggest that you, right now you have both of you have to agree on whether it comes up for review. I would say either or, either one of you, as opposed to you both having to agree. I'm sure I think it says and, Paul. Yeah. I think it says and. Yeah, it yeah. says and. We I just suggest it be either one, just so we, Okay. you know, <clears throat> I don't want you to have to 
if you don't agree. Fight it's, over it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, not even fight over it. If, if you got either one of you have no, a question. Either one of you have a question. Yeah. yeah, I agree with what Oren says. I mean, Chris might see something that you don't, or okay. you might we'll, see something we'll that Chris that doesn't. More. I think that's fair. Because you both have an area of expertise that you're going to do the plans in. It also creates different work for well, different people. Yeah. You know, somewhere <laughs> down the line, it's not going to be the two of us. Right. At some point. Exactly. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Good. So uh, did we say we wanted to try to do marijuana or? Do I want to do marijuana? I do. Okay We'd like to try to do it. Is there an opportunity to do it? And then, well, then. I think if you want, I can reach out to Renee and Sandy and see if, 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 if you guys want to give another some available times. Uh, you know, they, so right now, I, I need to talk to them to see when they'd be ready. I mean, they rolled it out to you. Um, yeah, I mean, if nobody, if the committee. I'm assuming that would be the same group, right? Yeah, or if not, I mean, if we each had the opportunity. Well, they were going to make change. some changes, I think, just based on our last conversation, yeah. right? So yeah. I think it'd be first and foremost, or, you know, are those changes done? Um, I don't know. For me personally, the next three weeks are really tough because I have night meetings for work in addition mm. to planning board. That, that but doesn't in, yeah. mean but that I would But in terms of be, a subcommittee from the planning board, I, I think yeah. we should do it, yeah. whether we swap out. I'm, I don't mind doing it like tracking changes, throwing comments in. I might not be able to be here physically, yeah. but I'm not saying that I wouldn't be more than, you know, happy to kind of throw out some ideas to you guys. I mean, if it's on a night, I can do it. I'd be happy to. I just know the next three weeks are tough, and then yeah. I don't know if that's pushing it too close to whatever the deadline's going to be for them to get yeah. something. You probably, my guess is, like, un unlike this where we can, we can get the board to you know, endorse the, the language that goes as a warrant article. We might not get that action from you, but at least they can get it, submit it by February 12th, and then continue to work with the board to refine the language before we come back. Oh, if it's after board. February 12th, then, then I should, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd be I, better maybe off. Maybe we decide on the 28th is our next planning board meeting, right? Right. So maybe we present this, talk about the experience, and then see what few want to volunteer. Yeah, and I mean, I don't mind keeping it like consistent if, if we're the three who, who have said we'll be on this subcommittee. You know, I'm, I'm okay with that. If you guys are not to speak for you, either one of you, or you, Alan, who's getting dragged into our, no, um, our uh, lovely committee here. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's good to have some consistency because I think we're all bringing different things to the table. I think if you keep swapping out members, it might get a little bit, you get different opinions. So if it's always the three of us that go and we'll be like, this is consistently what we've discussed. I think you establish a little bit more of a rapport as an official subcommittee, if that makes sense. For the same issue. Yeah, same. yeah, 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 yeah. For not, re not for relearning kind yeah, of. Yeah, exactly. The methodology. Right. You yeah. Want people jumping in and out third. If we have yeah, two I, th meetings, I think want. that makes it yeah. a little bit more difficult. Yep. Now, then again, I mean, I wasn't here for the marijuana take one. You know, when they got to where they are now, and I know that Joe and Tim have a lot of experience in that. They had been a part of all of that. I'm assuming Steve was too. I'm not sure about Kevin, but. You know, so, I mean, I definitely bring like a, don't know all the conversations that you had last time. All three of us wouldn't, um, but. Well, that's, a, that's probably a big point. Who, who so ma then maybe, you know, maybe it shouldn't be the three of us. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> maybe I just talked the three of us out of a job as the three newest members on the board. <laughs> so, well, uh, I'll, I'll just communicate that to Renee, but then I'll let them know that you guys are going to look up on the 28th and decide if the four, if this yeah yeah I mean I'm open to doing it as well but you know there's other members that have a lot more history and whatnot than yeah I, I mean yeah. agree with that Scott for Did sure someone say they worked in the field or worked something to do with it or no it just or like, oh, the other members of our our committee had yeah, been I when, I, I, when they the had, um, I thought somebody said they worked in or had yeah the like, oh, uh, Tim, I work for a company that does oh, yeah a lot of you did the testing the testing you, yeah. Yeah. I just remember yeah. something yeah. saying yeah somebody worked yeah. With, and it was the last go around with the bylaw they were a part of really yeah. drafting that yeah. that that last one. Um, so we can that out. yeah, we can figure that out. So yeah. And in fact, I guess I should make that. You're not going to put this on our agenda for next week, are you? To talk about for ZBA. For Do you ZBA. Want it on there? It's up to you. Um, can I just? I actually wasn't thinking about that, but you could do it as an update at the end. Yeah. This one or the? Yeah, this one. Cannabis. This. You guys don't have to worry about marijuana, right? No, because it's an overlay, right? It's overlay district. Yeah. It's an overlay, you know. Um, 
I guess we could put on the agenda on the 28th, you know, about a marijuana subcommittee. Just leave it there. Well, could we write just zoning bylaw subcommittee and then we could report out on this and then just touch on marijuana too? I don't know. Oh yeah, do it. Is that, well, is that like a header item? Yeah, just business. like, just like, yeah, you know, wherever yeah. it makes okay. sense, Paul. If we, we just, just if we just do that, then we can say, okay, these are this is the one thing we worked on, and at our last meeting we had a discussion about this. How do you guys feel yeah, about that? Help if, I don't know. If, I'm not sure if I have my help myself, but I started looking at it, and maybe internally, if I had a chance, I can just do a red line internally. So yeah. Just so we have yeah, something sure. to work from, yeah. work from yeah. and move yeah. it along, so yeah. we can give them some input as opposed to. And they made that's been helpful. Made, they yeah. Made some yeah, I just yeah. starting point. Yeah. I agree. I, just, I agree, so Orin. When you, you just know, highlight the things, I think we need even to talk when you about. did that with that was yeah. was great. I was like, okay, good. I've seen what Orin's thinking. Like, yeah, yeah. no, was, that was. Yeah, very it's some sometimes it's just stuff either I think yeah. we need to discuss or just I don't understand. Yeah. yeah, but it might be good if Paul just double checks that whatever copy you have is really the latest version in case they did make changes based yeah, on our last conversation. So that was yeah, the thing. I yeah. wouldn't want to review an yeah. old. If it could get me an update. That's, that won't be helpful. That's word. I'm not sure I can get to it either, especially by the 28th, but probably before the February meeting. Yeah. I'd like to try to take a shot because I started making some notes, but especially there's a lot of things, a lot of definitions they were going to take out because it wasn't relevant to what was in the rest of yeah. the. Yeah. Because so it could even the, the the whatever they have now could even be more streamlined than what we originally saw, which might yeah. be good. All right, Paul, are we good? Did we do a good job? <laughs> well, 50 minutes later. Man. At least we started early.